their pets. This time around, Lance Bass is going to weigh in. But first, here's today's Pop Start headlines. Pop start, guys. Uh -huh. I hate to cut off all the dream talk here, but we're going to start with Rita Moreno. We've got a sneak peek of Hoda's interview with the Hollywood and Broadway legend who happens to be one of this year's honorees of Inspiring America, the 2022 Inspiration List. Carson, lucky me, man. I got to sit down with her. She's 90 years young. She made history in 62, the first Latina to win an Oscar for her role as Anita in West Side Story. And she told me what that moment meant, not only to her, but to her whole community. And you know what I loved about that moment? I mean, it was your moment, but it was not just your moment. Oh, I love you for saying that. It was that. not just your moment. It was my people. Oh, my God, they cheered in Harlem. People yelling out the windows. She did it. She did it. And, you know, as a friend of mine said, what they were really saying was, we did it. Ugh. We did it. Uh, I, had chills. I had chills from everything that she's been through um, and everything. She just exemplifies. She's, she's an icon. Well, you great. can see Hoda's mm -hmm. interview with Rita and hear many more incredible individuals on our primetime special. We had Lester here last week talking about this as well. Some other names on that list, some great ones. Inspiring America, the 2022 Inspiration List. It airs Saturday. You cannot miss it. It's on NBC, <laughs> MSNBC, CNBC, and you can also catch it Sunday. Monday over on Telemundo and streaming as well. That is not all. Monday, Hoda's interview with Rita that you just saw a clip of is going to be out in a special so bonus podcast oh, episode so of Making Space. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, Red Table Talk. We've got an exclusive first look at today's new episode featuring the mom and stepdad of 2019 Miss USA, Chesley Christ, who tragically died by suicide earlier this year. Speaking out for the first time, April Simpkins opens up about the day she found out her daughter was gone. Oh, when I finally made it home, and got to my husband who was tr trying to understand what I was saying. So that was when we reached out to the police, like we got this message, get paramedic there. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, this must be like the first attempt, let's get on a plane, get up there, meet her at the hospital, yeah. let's see what we can do. We're texting the family. Um, we don't live in New York. We made it to the airport. We got on the plane, which is now taxiing when the police confirmed that she was no longer with us. Oh, oh, this is so tough. You can catch the new episode of Red Table Talk streaming today at 12 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Watch. All right, next up, Keith Morrison, the man with the golden voice, is at it again. This time, Keith's lending his buttery smooth narration to the latest sleep story over on the <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, it's called The Curious Case of the Overnight Oats. <laughs> By the way, Dateline fans apparently have been asking for this for years. We found two years ago on Twitter, somebody wrote, I wish Keith Morrison was my dad. Can you imagine the bedtime stories? Another asking, does Keith Morrison uh, narrate anything other than it's not about murder? Because I like his voice before I go to bed, but I could do without the nightmares. <laughs> well, yesterday, Dayline hopped on Twitter to announce the wait is over. Take a listen. It's a story about a bear. A bear who didn't know what to do and didn't have many options. Oh. Is that a six-hour story? <laughs> that was the intro to the bear. We're going to be here a while. It's nice to see how he sits when he drives. Yes, oh. yes. oh you can gosh. hear the full sleep story on the Calm app. It is streaming What's now. What's great about Keith is when we saw him last week, like, yeah. he talks like that in real yes, person. Yeah. It's not like, it's yeah. not an act. Yeah. Would he you answers like the to phone. take my mic? Hello. Oh. <laughs> I said that. Next up, Daniel Radcliffe. Showed you a little bit of this earlier. The Harry Potter star is completely transformed in the first teaser. For Weird, the Al Yankovic story, Radcliffe stepping into the shoes of the song parody hit maker for Roku's upcoming biopic, which, by the way, is co-written by Yankovic himself. Here's a little bit of that trailer. Hope you guys are ready for this. An accordion. <laughs> so much about that that is just how I'm dying to see. Weird is set to start streaming this fall. Mm. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So weird outfit. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Oh, and finally, we've been teasing this one for a while. The class of 2022 Ooh. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, all right, so here we go. In the performing category, congratulations Wait, to Molly Parton. Of I course. thought she said she didn't yeah, have that. I'll get to that. Okay. By the way, congratulations to Savannah's high school dreamy crush. Duran Duran. And the boys of Duran Duran. Eminem. Eminem the Rhythmics. Yeah. Carly Simon. Oh, that's going to be so good. Lionel Richie. What? And lastly, Pat Benatar. For five artists 
This was their first time on the ballot. So what oh are your reactions? So does that mean they're in? They're in. They are yeah. in. They're They'll in. all perform. They have a big show. You yes. Went yes. I went one year. year. It's so cool. Oh. The show's coming up. And this is, by the way, another side note that's great. This is the first time that six female acts are being inducted into wow. one class, including Dolly Parton, who there was a little bit of confusion back in yeah. March because she had asked to be withdrawn from consideration. Mm -hmm. Then she recently came back and said she would accept the honor. She still wants to take somebody else's spot, yeah. Yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But we love Dolly, and she's in. Dolly, six decades in the music business. She recorded more than 50 studio albums. Wow. That's 5-0, written thousands of songs. Well-deserved. That induction ceremony is great. It's November 5th. It's going to air um, at a later date on HBO. So it's not live, but it's on HBO Max. Also, it'll be on Sirius XM. You can find more about the inductees over at today.com. Big congratulations to all the Hall of Fame. Of a list. That was really that cool. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. Eminem. I'm happy for Eminem. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Cool. A few more items for you. First up, Pistols. The new trailer here is by one of my favorite directors, Danny Boyle. He's in charge of the upcoming series about the legendary punk rockers who made up Sex Pistols. So this show's based off a of guitarist, Steve Jones's Jonesy. His 2017 memoir, Lonely Boy, is going to track the fast rise to fame for the Pistols that they had before the band dissolved just three years later. Here's a bit of the trailer. Whether you can play is not the criteria. It's whether you've got something to say. Come see us play. We're awful. We're creating a revolution. I don't want musicians, I want saboteurs, assassins. What do you want to say about your music? Actually, we're not into music. We're into chaos. That it looks good. Chaos, to say the least. The six-episode limited series is going to start streaming on Hulu May 31st. Looking forward to that. Finally, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Play the music. The iconic rock band's getting the documentary treatment in a new movie titled Traveling Band, CCR, at the Royal Albert Hall. The film is set to feature newly restored performance footage that had been gathering dust, sitting in a vault in London for the past five decades. Director Bob Smeaton's going to be at the helm of this project. Bob's done documentaries for a lot of other music greats, Beatles, Jimi Hendrix come to mind. And the cherry on top for this particular project is Academy Award winner and longtime Creedence fan Jeff Bridges will narrate this documentary. And those, my friends, are your pop start headlines for today. Coming up next, very impressive young woman, Olympic champ Eileen Gu. She's in the house. She'll tell us what's up next on Pop Star Plus. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. California-born freestyle skier Eileen Gu made waves when she competed for China at this year's Winter Olympics. She took home three medals. Two of them happened to be gold. And then this week, after strutting her stuff at the Met Gala in New York, she joined us in Studio 1A to update us on everything that's happening in her life. The breakout star of the Winter Olympics, her name is Eileen Gu. The teen phenom racked up several gold medals on the slopes. She's been juggling her newfound fame with competitions, college on the horizon, and a stunning appearance at this week's fashion's biggest night. Take a look. Eileen Gu. This 
This is what February looked like for 18-year-old freestyle skier Eileen Gu. Golden. The American-born teen who grew up in California won not one, not two, but three Olympic medals for Team China, honoring her mother's home country on the international stage. The golds in big air and half pipe make Eileen the youngest freestyle skiing champion in Olympic history and the first freestyle skier to win three medals at a single Winter Olympics. She used her podium finishes as a platform to cheer on the next generation of young women in her sport. It's always been about encouraging girls. It's always been about showing people what's possible. A mission Eileen has been on since she was in seventh grade. I encourage you all to step out of your comfort zone to show the boys that girls are just as powerful as they are. Since Beijing, Eileen's gone from smashing records in historic fashion to becoming a fashion icon, making a name for herself as one of the faces of luxury brands Louis Vuitton and Tiffany's, rocking both on the red carpet at fashion's famous first Monday in May, the Met Gala. Eileen, it's so good to have you in studio. By the way, you really are the whole package. I mean, Savannah and I were just talking about you. You, um, first of all, an Olympic gold medalist. You're, you, you're everything in fashion. What did you get on your SATs? I got a 1580 on my SAT. Okay, did you study? Do you study all the time? Are you a hard worker, or do things just come easy for you? I did take every single available <laughs> online test for the SAT, so I'm not gonna sit back and be like, oh, it was easy. But um, yeah, it was. It was just standardized tests, and you can study for them. Well, hard work seems to be your theme. Uh, when you got those medals in Beijing, was it was it a pinch me moment, or was it like lots and lots of practice that happened to work out perfectly on that day? I think it was both. The mm -hmm. really standout moment for me was when I landed that 1620 in Big mm -hmm. Air, which was my first event. And I've always said, you know, my message is about inspiring young girls and um, inspiring more people to hear about the sport and to use it as a force to create interconnection and cross-cultural communication mm -hmm. and I knew that it was such a big moment and there were so many people watching mm -hmm. and it was my time to live up to that standard that I've set and so in that sense I was like no matter what there is no failure because if I don't land the worst failure is to not try so I just wanted to try it and I'd never done it before I'd never even tried it on airbag or anything and wow. um, landed it got that gold medal and I was on top of the world well your mom taught you well you can tell that she's always supporting you she's actually here in the studio and you did make a decision uh, to compete for China. And I was just wondering the thought process because I know that wasn't an easy decision. I know it came with backlash. So tell me about that piece. Yeah, so for me, it's always been about using force, uh, using sport as a force of communication. Mm -hmm. And especially in a sport like free skiing, it's so free, it's so personal. You use it and it's creative, there's style. And a lot of people in China had never even heard of it. And so kind of introducing that sport culture to younger girls especially is it changed my life you know mm -hmm. and so to be able to have that kind of contact with the sport and now there are 300 million people in china who've gone on snow after the winter olympics and that impact is absolutely insane did you feel like you needed to have a thick skin for for what came at you after that absolutely i mean people always have their own opinions but for me what i try to stick to is I know that there, there's no wrong or right. There's only intention. And I'm trying to make the world a better place in my own way. Mm -hmm. And if people disagree with that, that's okay. And I just encourage them to make the world better in their way, right? Mm -hmm. We can approach this situation from different standpoints. So yeah, teach their own. So you're going to Stanford. Is that next on your list? I'm going to college in the fall, yes. Oh my gosh, so you're going to college in the fall. You're a, you're a, you're a model, you do all that stuff. Are we going to see you at the Olympics again? Is that going to happen, do you think? Who knows? I mean, honestly, I really love skiing still. It is a very personal and expressive part of me, and I think it makes me who I am. It's taught me resilience. It's taught me that um, cross-cultural communication. And so in that sense, yeah, I think why not? But yeah, let's see how school goes first. You are a lovely and delightful person. And again, your mom's here cheering you on. No one's beaming bigger than she is. I don't know if we did get a shot of her because we, we did. Oh, good. I just want just want to make sure that she gets her air time, too. I know she doesn't love to be on camera, but we had to show her. Eileen, thank you so much. We really appreciate you coming to see us. Congrats on all of your success. Thank you so much, Hoda. That is an impressive human right there. So great to hear from Eileen. Shout out to her mom who was with her, who was just so sweet. All right, next up, they're gonna be famous, Five Eva. Our raucous visit with the ladies from the Peacock hit next.
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. And welcome back to Popstar Plus, the hit show Girls 5 Eva is back for season two. We couldn't help but enjoy having the stars with us. We got the cast of Girls 5 Eva. <laughs> We the love Emmy-nominated Peacock original comedy is back for a new season. It follows a one-hit <laughs> Wonder Girl group from the 90s, giving their dreams another shot. Take a look. Right now, our best play is to cross-pollinate with people who already have a huge following. Yes. Who do we know? Is anyone not blocked by Carson Daly? No. No. Is anyone willing to unblock Fred Durst? No. Absolutely not. Yes. So good. Come on. I'm sorry, so Fred Durst. We brought him here. Okay, <laughs> guys. Sarah Bareilles, Renee Elise Goldsberry, Paula Pell, Busy Phillips. It is so good to see you guys. Good good you know we are your super fans. We are. Oh, and we likewise. appreciate that. Yes. This show is so fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, for it to come back for a second season, Sarah, were you just like, yes? Oh, we, we, I think it was like before we were done filming the first episode of the first season where we were like, please, can we have a season oh. two? We just, we love each other so much and it's just, it, it's yeah. such a joy to work on the show. You know what truly. I forgot to, like what I forgot that we've not talked about in what? any interview, what we gave as our crew gift at the wrap of season one was what? were those prayer candles, but with our faces on it. <laughs> Who are you people? So that, so that people could just light them to like- Pray for season pray two. Pray for yeah. season two. And it worked. It worked. Oh my God, it did. The, the music always makes me laugh so hard. Oh. We were talking about the Tiny Butt song. <laughs> tiny Butt song. You come up with- <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Vanessa Williams singing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like yeah, so how do you guys come up with them? You write some of the music, right? I write very little very of the little. music, okay. I, but Jeff Richman and Mary yeah. Scardino you know, is, is, you know, and there's a whole music team, but Jeff Richman is sort of like the music guru and Meredith uh -huh. writes a lot of the lyrics. So what, can you give us a preview a little bit of what's happening in season two? Because now you guys are like, you were fake friends. Yeah in the girl band back in the day. <laughs> yes. Now you're kind of like, hey, we're going to be, we're actually really going to be We desperately friends. need each other. Yes. Yeah, we desperately <laughs> need friends. Yeah. So now what happens? Like, yeah. where are you on the journey? And all our filters have fallen off. Right. Yes. So all the bull is gone. So now we're like, we really look at each other and we're ourselves. Yeah. So we kind of fall in love with each other again or for the first time maybe. And then... Uh, well, basically, We're making an album. season two is album mode. Yeah. Yes. So we this entire season we have a record deal. You yes. do? Yes. A very small label very signs small. Yeah. us. Okay. Property records. It's a uh -huh. it's property records. Property, 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 property brothers. Property brothers. Property brothers. Have a record brothers. label, and we are oh God, we are desperately hilarious. trying to be their their big horse. What's your song? Like, yeah. Do you have a hit? Yeah. Do you have a single from the Momentum. album? Momentum. Yeah. 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 Can we Momentum. have a little taste? How does it go? Momentum, yeah. It's a moment. We're contenders, but we can be tender. Unstoppable, this unstoppable, atoppable. 
Courageous. Don't care what our age is. <laughs> We can keep going. We can go in. We can go in. That is intense. And I'm, and I'm, I'm singing in the alto line. Courageous. Don't care what our age is. I'm always on the bottom there. You Love can it. hear me. Does Paula just crack everybody up? Yes. yes. No, wait. How do you stand it? Like, how do you not break well, up? Well, everyone so cracks up. everyone up. That's no, why it's but such Paula, a freaking love fest. But Paula, you're a little, you're kind of by She's yourself. Yeah. Is she not? She's by herself. She's yeah. all I'm by trying her. to be good because the first time I was on the Today Show for Wine Country, I immediately said a swear word. Word. <laughs> and Tina turned to me and went, you can't do that. <laughs> now, you know, guys, uh, Savannah's kind of bumming. Yeah, I know. tell them why. She, well, well, all morning long, we just set this up for y'all, because okay. you know we're big fans of the show, Huge. us together. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, <laughs> we have a season two. How is it with us loving this show so much? They never asked us for a cameo. We could be like, we could do something, you know. And um, Hoda's <laughs> no. like, yeah, ah. yeah. Oh, boy, she's like, no. totally. Huh? Well, so then I, I say it feel bad before I... the commercial. <gasps> Guys, maybe we could do a cameo. And they I say, you. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah next year. Year. a cameo. Oh, you did it. Well, <laughs> you're <laughs> by herself. Well, Guys, can you give Hoda some news about? Female bonding and <laughs> sticking by your your yeah. girlfriends. And sometimes Tony, you're the wiki. I didn't think you yes. I didn't think you'd mention it. It's oh it's so tiny, it's twenty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe can you guys have us both back? Yeah, can we? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It's well, kind of like do. when you're in high school and and a teacher has some special barbecue and only invites some people yeah. and they're like, Oh, that was so that fun was. at Mr. Gersh's yeah. house. <laughs> but then that friend pretends and then you're sitting there like it was at Mr. Gersh's house. So it's actually even more more than that. Hi, Mr. Gertz. <laughs> She's so, I'm so mad. You know what? Okay. Maybe we could do like a musical. Maybe the girls could be on the show oh, doing a musical yes. performance. Yes. Oh, oh, and oh yes. I thought something we were going to get to sing. And and one right. of us could go down and you could take our place. Oh my gosh, uh, yes. Is that amazing? Can, can I take we? your place? Yes. Oh, I volunteer no, as tribute. You I'll go down. I'll go down. Okay. They're wrapped. This, okay. They're telling us to wrap. No, they're not. Yes, they are. They said it's forever. All right. We're right on. Yes. Wrap before I swear. Wait, don't. No. You should get the one that licks at the end. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Don't forget, you can stream the brand new season of Girls 5 Eva on Peacock. Good. So good. Don't watch unless you want to laugh, smile, and feel yeah, joy. Yeah, feel great. Okay? <laughs> but if you want those things, this is your show. Not exactly sure why those characters have some sort of beef with me, but I'm okay with it. Big fan. Still coming up, Lance Bass shares how much he loves his dog and how much that dog has made Lance's life better. News is happening. Now, look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News. Streaming free. Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back, friends. This month marks National Pet Month, and we spoke with a guy that I've known for a long, long time now, formerly of InSync, my buddy Lance Bass. So he told us how his furry friends have literally shaped his life. Take a look. Yeah, we do always have little voices for them. And they kind of talk like this. Okay, Dad. Um, and then we think Dale has a slight Australian accent just because. Um, we have these backstories for them that uh, he secretly wants to be a movie star dog and he really wants to be Australian. And so we have like little Aussie voices coming out of him. 
All right, these are my puppies, Chip and Dale, uh, which is very fitting because they're little rascals and they act like Chip and Dale from, from Disney. And they're mixed breed rescues, so we don't know exactly what they are, but we're assuming they're Chihuahua Terrier. Um, and Dale might even have a little schnauzer in because he's got, he's got that beard. Um, but the sweetest dogs ever. The way we got Chippendale was definitely different from our other rescues. Uh, we weren't really in the market for another dog. Uh, we already had one you know, at the house and we were fostering others. Uh, so these came to us in the most Hollywood way. Uh, it's, it's gaggy, but uh, Kate Beckinsale found these dogs, uh, this litter, um, and rescued them. And she didn't know what to do with them. So she called me and said, I have a litter of dogs, they need help. And so I took them, I gave them to Lisa Vanderpump for her new shelter that wasn't even open yet. Um, so they went and lived there and all of them got adopted uh, immediately except Chip and Dale. And they were the last two in the litter. Um, I walked into Vanderpump Dogs and just fell and loved them. I'm like, okay, we'll take them home. We'll find them a good home. We'll, you know, we'll foster them until we find them a great home. Uh, and they have not left the house yet. <laughs> it's so weird because when I'm naming dogs, uh, they just come to me easily. Every rescue I've ever had, I've named them kind of on the spot. Chippendale, when I saw them at Vanderpump Dogs, they were, all they were doing was, you know, fighting like this, just like a dust ball of just wrestling the whole time. And it reminded me of, you know, Chippendale, you know, chipmunks. Uh, so immediately was like, it's Chip and Dale, uh, and it just stuck, and they really live up to their name. Well, it's, it's funny because, you know, they're twins. My dogs are twins, but they have completely different personalities. Um, the one that's a little smaller, Chip, he's the boss. Like, he came, you know, he was number one in the litter, controlled everything, uh, although he's probably the runt of it, too, because he's the smallest of all the dogs, uh, which is probably why he has such an attitude. Uh, but definitely, he, he controls the house and, uh, and puts Dell in his place. Um, loves attention, just human attention. He just needs it. He'll crawl inside you and cut it. He gives the best hugs. Uh, but if Dale tries to get the hugs, he will usher him away, which is like so mean. So we give Dale his own quality time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Chip's the boss and Dale's just a little teddy bear that, uh, sometimes feels a little abused by a brother. <laughs> It'll be very interesting to see how Chip and Dale are with the twins. Um, I'm, I'm guessing they're gonna be really great because they are fun little gentle dogs uh, and super sweet, but you just never know. And of course, we're gonna be very you know careful at the beginning of introducing them. Uh, I hear if you, you know, it, it's a better, to bring in maybe the baby blanket first, let them sleep with it one night to get used to the smell. Um, and then just kind of a slow introduction, um, let them sniff them a good bit and we'll cuddle a little bit and then hopefully they'll become the best brother and sister ever. It is so strange how dogs can really pick up on your energy and your, your mood. Uh, and there's you know several times in the last you know, four years that you know you'll have bad days and you know some disasters happen in your life and it's like they just know um and the way that they kind of like curl up to you and kind of give you that look of like you know i'm here for you it always comes at the best time uh, there's nothing better than a puppy hug my pets have made my life so much better i i do i mean there's studies on this saying that you know dogs extend your life and i can feel that and the love that you give and the love that you receive it, you can't match it anywhere it's the only unconditional love you'll ever receive and it's just a beautiful thing and you know they're there for every life moment um, and i'm glad that we get to share that Good to see Lance there. That's a great story. He's a great guy, too. Hey, that's going to do it for today's Pop Star Plus. I'm sorry it's over, but tomorrow there's more, so come on back. We're going to be hearing from the star of Jurassic World, the man, Chris Pratt, tomorrow right here on Pop Star Plus. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.
Hello, and thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. We are inching towards summer, and that means it's time to start planning that summer getaway and you won't be alone. The TSA says airline passenger numbers are soaring almost back to pre-pandemic levels with more than two million flyers on most days. But be prepared to pay up. The surge in demand and rising oil prices have pushed airfares up 40% since January. According to AAA, the average cost for a regular gallon of gas is $4.12. Compare that to a year ago when it was $2.89 for a gallon. And rising food costs are also taking a piece out of our budgets. The average household now spends about $327 more per month to cover the soaring costs of everyday necessities from gas to groceries. But no need to let inflation stop your family vacation, according to financial expert Winnie Sun. You know, you want to look at there's still areas where you can go to drive to and perhaps just don't get on a plane since you know airline prices continue to get higher. But, do you know, if you do a little smart planning with points and miles, there's a lot that you can do without really breaking your budget. That's why for the next 25 minutes, we're going to help you get through it from amusement park hacks to whether you should fly or drive. We'll even talk about what it's like to take a cruise these days. But first, to guide us through the state of travel, Samantha Brown, she has traversed the world for decades. She joins us now with what we need to know about traveling. It is such a pleasure to have you here. It is great to be here. Thanks Let's talk travel. Me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's something you know a lot about. Mm -hmm. So after two years of us being cooped up, I know I'm absolutely ready to get out, see some sites. You're on the road all the time. Let's start just with masking. What are you seeing from that perspective? What's the latest on the guidelines? Planes, trains, buses. So planes, obviously we know in public transportation and even planes, a mask mandate has ended mm -hmm. for passengers as well as crew, but not airports. Airports get to dictate what they want. So right now we're even seeing like JFK, New York, LAX, Los Angeles, they're not dropping their mask mandates. Even stores you'll see signs up, we prefer that you wear a mask. Right. So my advice is bring masks. You may need them. You may want them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What about the idea that there's just so many places in the world to go? Where are you seeing people gravitating to the most? Oh, gosh, the United States of America. You know, we began it in 2020 and people just just continually dial down on our amazing country, mm -hmm. especially, of course, Americans. So the entire eastern seaboard, the west coast, Colorado is a massive hot destination. Really, the only destinations that aren't hot right now, Vicki, are major cities. Oh, um, you know, for the leisure traveler, they just have haven't come back. Major cities get international travelers, a lot of business travelers, and that travel has not yet returned. Okay, we know every good trip starts with planning, right? So what's the best way to set a destination and sort of plan out an itinerary so you can have a successful trip and a good time? So I love this because I talk to a lot of moms out there. We're the travel planners, mm -hmm. right? Right now, what's dictating where people are going is simply can we afford it, yeah. right? The affordability. And these walls are now closing in, especially for summer. So a great tactic is to sign up for cheap fare alerts. I I love websites like airfarewatchdog.com, skyscanner.com. I sign up for an alert, I plug in my departing airport, and then every single week, and sometimes three weeks, if, uh, every three, three weeks, three times a week, sorry, I am sent the cheapest departures leaving from oh. my airport. So now I have a whole nice. list, Vicki, that I can work from that Based is on budget budget. and available. Oh, I love that. Okay, that's a really great hack. I want to say, full disclosure, my parents and I, we are Samantha Brown super fans. <laughs> like, my mom actually owns your luggage. The bag yes. with the, like, the little carry-on yep. like, attached together. It's my system. Yep. We have loved you and followed you for years, and you're such an expert here. So let's talk about what are your hacks for packing and, and making sure you don't leave anything behind and that it's hassle-free. Okay, so my best travel pa packing hack right now, bring old shoes. All oh. your old sneakers, never throw those away or even donate. Bring them, pack them, use them, then leave them them at your destination. Oh my gosh. Shoes take up way too much room in your luggage. Now you've got space back to bring things from your travel. So that's my number one packing hack. For being prepared for the airport or any type of travel, food. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know road trips, everyone brings food, but yes. for the airport, I'm seeing very, very long lines yes. for restaurants, for food. Maybe you can't sit down and get a meal and that plane doesn't feed you anymore. Right. We know that if our kids don't eat and if moms don't eat, 
all it's it's over. Everybody's right? super Every, angry. It's so not fun. Bring a picnic lunch is what I say to the airport. Pack food. That is so smart. The old shoes, fascinating. Old shoes. Just don't take pictures from like you know. <laughs> exactly. Don't show no the old shoes in the photos. Exactly. I love it. Okay. Well, we know the airlines have been struggling sort of to get back to normal. Staffing levels are low. We're seeing a lot of yes. cancellations. You add on the crazy weather, and people are getting stranded at airports. Are there things that we can do ahead of our trip so that we don't end up in that kind of situation? Well, you can't really avoid canceled flights. No one has that crystal ball, but mm -hmm. there are flights that tend to leave better than others, uh -huh. and that is your first flight out. Okay. That 6 a.m. flight, 6.30 a.m. flight, mm -hmm. it is so painful getting up at 3.30 and 4 a.m., but it is absolutely worth it. Those planes okay. leave. Why? Because that plane has come in the night before, okay. so you already have your plane, you hopefully have the crew, mm -hmm. and you depart before all the weather, all the other delays, all delays happening on the East Coast or the West Coast meets the East Coast happen. You are on route. And those are now the, still the cheapest flights to get. They may okay. still have availability on those 6 a.m. flights. So you're doing well. If you get a uh, first flight out and direct, you're doing good with travel. You just got to wake up the kids and wake get up. Board. My kids would always go in their pajamas. They oh. loved it. Just roll out of bed, put on the shoes, the old sneakers. The old sneakers that we're going <laughs> to leave behind. We're going to leave behind and have, you know, replacements. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Genius. Okay, so <laughs> with so much happening right now, do you think people should invest extra in travel insurance? I mean, it's so expensive to travel to begin with, but is it worth it to get that extra insurance? Well, it depends. I think if you're spending a lot of money and people are making these really big once in a lifetime trips because they haven't been able to travel for years. They're bringing their parents, their kids. That's a lot of money. So the way I look at it as this is an investment and travel insurance protects that investment if it's a lot of money. If you are going overseas, absolutely, okay. especially get medical coverage. Right. Understand that our own health insurance here in the United States provides little to no coverage overseas. Mm -hmm. You will want that. And so it's just, again, protecting your investment, looking forward to the trip, and knowing you're you're in good hands if, if something goes wrong. I could talk to you forever. I know. The Let's do it. Only, Samantha <laughs> Brown, thank you so much. Well, now that we've gotten all those great tips for how to plan and carry out a vacation, what about whether you should fly or drive? Questions you want to ask before you head out. Plus, RVing is more popular than ever. But trust me, it is definitely not like driving a regular car. Hit the road with me as I go to RV school for a driving lesson and later on amusement parks. Big time, hot destination right now. The secrets to saving money and packing it all in. Much more when Consumer Confidential returns. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Who comes back together? Oh, I'm so, so happy. And me. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. If you're planning on hitting the road this summer, finding ways to save some money is always welcome news, especially with record high gas prices. As we talked about earlier, AAA says the average cost for a regular gallon of gas is $4.12. That's actually up more than 40% from just a year ago. Joining us now is Paula Twydale. She's a senior vice president for travel at AAA. She's going to help us navigate our summer road trip. Paula, welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. So gas prices at these record levels, we haven't seen them like this before 
It's really hurting all of us in our pocketbook. What are some ways that you can save if you're planning to do a road trip this summer? Well, anyone that's planning a road trip or wherever they're going, we say plan early. Mm -hmm. uh, planning is critical. Knowing the distances you're going, look at times, mm -hmm. tolls if you're on the road, stops that you may want to make, and, and certainly what you're going to spend. And AAA has talked about filling up at the beginning of the week. It can be cheaper in different locations like you want to find in town versus right off the freeway. That can be a way to save money as well. What about if you are on the fence between flying and driving? You know, you're not just thinking about the price of the plane ticket, right? What are some other things to consider and factor into your budget? Sure, great question. Really, it's about doing the math. Mm. You have to figure out what is the distance I'm going to travel? How much discretionary time do I have to plan my vacation? So do you want to be spending your time on the road at the front end of your vacation, the back end driving if it's maybe 8 or 12 or hours of the day? Uh, so the distance comes into play and really how many people are traveling. So if two people, yourself and a significant other, are going to travel, you may want to fly because mm -hmm. you can afford that plane ticket when you're planning early to get the best rate. However, if you're going to drive, you, you may be losing those 12 or 15 hours in the car right. and then you're going to plan on stops and any ancillary costs that you may incur if you're going to overnight in a hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, and understanding too, there are parking fees that come yeah. into play. So what's happening when you get to that hotel and you incur parking fees? Let's talk about rentals and car rentals because there's major sticker shock out there. We were planning a trip to the West Coast and thought we would just rent a car and instead decided, you know what? It makes more sense to take a ride share like an Uber or a Lyft from the airport to our destination because we don't really need a car for the whole time that we're traveling. So what do people need to know on different ways to save on car rentals or maybe not even renting a car? Well, first of all, knowing the personal circumstances, right? If you're in a resort area or with family, you may not need a rental mm -hmm. car when you get to your destination. But if you do, uh, you would want to really consider the off-airport locations as well in the local area in the community. They're usually less expensive, number one, okay. uh, because they're not paying those airport taxes. Right. right? So that's first. So ride you get to the airport and then you take a ride share to an off-airport location yes, to pick up a car. And sometimes the locations have pickup services oh, too. Okay. So weigh those differences out and, and maybe you're going to rent a car. But the in the case of yourself where you're going to be staying and attractions or restaurants or things are all in walking distance, you're not going to really need to rent a car. A ride share is a good option. Mm -hmm. But if you do need to rent a car, do it ahead of time. Uh, plan so that you have the inventory available, making sure you have the selection of the price. And if you have an option, pay in advance because mm -hmm. you can save about 20% off your bill. Oh. I've seen a $100 difference between pay now at time of booking versus pay at the counter. Oh, so that's you real have money. more choice because there will be shortages this year. More people are traveling this summer. 52% of Americans have already made their plans for the summer. Great advice. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us, Thank Paula. Thank you so much. Well, speaking of hitting the road, RVing really became popular during the pandemic. And if you are thinking about going on your own cross-country adventure, just remember driving an RV, it is not like driving a car. They are big, they're heavy, and if you don't know what you're doing, they can be dangerous. To show you what to expect, I went to driving school. Time to hit the open road. And with a recreational vehicle, it's a comfortable and even luxurious way to see the country. RVs are so popular right now, one major rental company reports sales are up 38% from the previous year. But some RVs are more than 40 feet long, 13 feet tall, and weigh more than 40,000 pounds, making them even bigger and heavier than a school bus. And that's why they say before you drive one of these recreational vehicles, you need some specialty training. That's what I'm doing here in Texas in this parking lot where they've set up these orange cones and a little driving course. And you know what? I'm going to crush it. My instructor, Tim Armstrong, with the RV Driving School. He has 25 years of experience as a professional semi-truck driver and RV instructor. Our vehicle, this massive motorhome that sleeps four, has a full kitchen, bathroom, and even a washer and dryer. A true home away from home, loaned to us by the National Indoor RV Centers. So before we get behind the wheel, what do we have to do? We're going to do a safety check. Okay. We're going to walk around, make sure all our hatches are closed. We have air in the tires. There's nothing underneath that could cause us a problem. And check the front and the back to make sure those areas are clear. Time to get into the driver's seat. But first, a minor wardrobe change. You had me change out of my flip-flops to wear these shoes. Why was that important? We always want a solid shoe to drive because I want you to have a firm 
control of the brake and the gas. Okay, here we go. Next, I get situated. Before we can drive, we have to have everything set up for you. That means adjust the seat so you can reach the pedals and see above the dashboard. Make sure you can reach the steering wheel and your arms are relaxed. And fine tune the all important mirrors so you can see what's beside you while you're turning. Mirrors and these size coaches, mm -hmm. that's your very best friend. We are all adjusted. How do I put this thing into gear? First off, put your foot on the brake. Got it. On the left side, there's a little panel that says DNR. Press D for drive. That yellow knob up on the dash, that is your parking brake. Push the brake? Yep. Ooh, that's satisfying. Finally, we're ready to roll. I'm just going to move a couple inches and then grab on with the brakes. That's air brakes, so okay. they, they tend to grab a little quicker. Yeah, they do. Tim says those brakes are sensitive for a reason. Vehicles this size need 450 feet to come to a full stop from highway speeds. A lot of weight you're trying to bring to a stop. Now that I know how to stop it, I learned how to park it, which was harder than I thought. Whoops. We're going backwards and we should be going forwards. I've drifted way over. I feel like I'm going to run over that cone. Fortunately, I only took out a few parking cones. Did I run over those front ones? Oh, yeah, they're gone. But soon I straighten it out. Look at that, right this. down the cone. Bam! Oh, yeah. Relying on my mirrors and backup camera to ease into my parking spaces. Get the hang of it. Boom. Done. Tim says most crashes occur at less than five miles an hour while parking, which is why you should leave a buffer from the curb. And he says beginners should get out of the vehicle to double check. So we look here, we've got three feet of clearance yet. The way yours is set up, you're perfect. Now for the real test, the driving course. Boy, this thing is very different from driving a car. Holy smokes. And on my very first turn, I pop the curb. Okay. Gotta watch oh, out. Wow. What watch was that? that little mirror. Now watch from our GoPro mounted on the RV. Oops. While I did hit a few bumps, whoa, whoa, the whoa. Curb again. I found that curb. I finally turned a corner. There you go. Turn okay. quickly. You got it. Oh, yeah. I learned my lesson. Cruising in an RV can be a great way to see the country, but only with the proper training. Oops. All right. Well, driving the RV was fun, but it was exhausting. It really took total concentration. The RV Driving School charges $590 for individual two-day lessons. What you just watched was mostly what's covered in the first day. Some of the lessons we didn't go over, how to enter and exit an off-ramp, how to stop at high speeds, how to get through those toll booths, and also, don't forget, pumping your gas. That's even different with an RV, and it certainly emphasizes why this kind of training is important if you're going to get behind the wheel of a large, heavy vehicle. All right, so are you ready to go cruising? A look at what you need to know before you hit the high seas and later learn the tricks of the trade to make the most out of your next visit to an amusement park. From the must-do rides and foods to try, corn dog and Dole Whip Abdi, to tips to save you money, you are watching Consumer Confidential. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. If you wanted to set sail over the past two years, you know it was nearly impossible. The cruise industry was hit hard by COVID challenges. But get your flip-flops and swimsuits ready. Cruise lines are making a big comeback. They're promising a safe experience for travelers, and demand is through the roof. Here to tell us what to expect is Colleen McDaniel. She's the editor-in-chief of Cruise Critic. Colleen, welcome. Thanks so much. First, let's talk about what do people need to know about cruise travel right now in the pandemic? What are the safety precautions that are being taken? You bet. So really over the past two years, uh, the cruise industry has made a slow comeback. Um, in the first year, there wasn't really a whole lot in the way of cruising. But since about a year ago, it's really made the comeback. There isn't really a general protocol in place that all the cruise lines share, but you can count on the fact that they're all going to be really similar because they were worked on with the CDC. One thing mm -hmm. that is a real commonality among all the cruise lines is vaccination. So any adult mm -hmm. who is eligible to be vaccinated will need to be vaccinated and all crew on board cruise ships are vaccinated. Otherwise, we're seeing testing across the board. So in order to get on a cruise ship, you do have to produce a negative COVID test. Now, mm -hmm. masking has been one of those things that's a little bit back and forth. We've seen the same thing mm -hmm. on land. Sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't. Some cruise lines still require them. Most cruise lines still require them for crew. Um, and then we also have medical facilities on board in case there is a COVID uh, breakout or COVID cases on board. And we're also seeing some contact tracing. So all these things are really designed to keep passengers, the crew, and even the people in the destinations that the cruise lines visit safe. Testing, vaccination, of course, quarantine, if people do get sick on board the cruise. So where are people going? What are some of the great destinations we should keep an eye on? Well, right now, Alaska is so hot. Um, Alaska is one of those destinations that for a lot of people, it's really a dream vacation. Over the last two years, people weren't really able to visit. There was a partial cruise season to Alaska last year, uh, but this is really going to be the first year that it's kicking off full steam. As a matter of fact, the first ships are just getting there now, uh, and you mm -hmm. can get there on those big cruise ships on a luxury ship or even an expedition ship. Also, we're seeing a lot of interest in those expedition routes. So places like the Galapagos and Antarctica mm. are super hot. Uh, as a matter of fact, this Antarctica season, which really begins uh, in that November time period, is looking to be the biggest Antarctica season ever. Also, if you can believe it, people are loving world cruises, which they started about 120 Ooh. days and, and beyond. Uh, this is lots of time at sea, but the cool thing is yeah. you really see the whole world on these world cruises. We've been hearing that they've been selling out within 24 hours, so people are really anxious. That pent-up demand is there, and they're ready to get out on the road. Yeah, after being in your house, now you're ready to see the world and be on the water for 120 days. Last question for you quickly. Talk to us about how do we find deals? Because obviously things cost so much more right now. Yeah, and I talked about high demand. Um, that is actually the case with cruising right now. We are not seeing a lot in the way of deals because the demand is so high. Mm -hmm. Now that said, you always can look for a last minute deal and that's really a deal under 90 days or so out. It, you might find a little bit of a discount on your cruise. The caveat is you might not get the cabin you want on the ship you want mm. and maybe not even exactly the destination that you want to visit. So do mm. be aware of that. Instead, what you might want to look for are additional perks. And this is fairly common from the cruise lines where they give you things like free Wi-Fi, uh, free beverage packages, mm -hmm. uh, even included gratuities. So it's a great way. And ultimately, it might actually save you more than a discount off your fare. OK, fantastic trips, tips rather. Colleen McDaniel, thank you so much. Well, families love amusement parks, but they can be pricey. Next up, ways to save and how to maximize your next outing. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. NBC News, streaming free now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? are ready for something like this. Come on. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything That's you need. Who comes back to 
together. Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Our world is facing some complex issues. Chuck Todd breaks them down. Every Thursday, a deep dive into a new subject. Instead of trying to cover a lot of topics in one episode, we're going to focus on one and take a deeper look at how it impacts America. Exploring and explaining the critical stories that affect our future. Meet the Press Reports. Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. Streaming on NBC News Now and on demand next day on Peacock. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Amusement parks are a big attraction, and while COVID slowed down business and even closed some of the parks, they are looking to bounce back. In 2019, the top 20 theme parks in North America combined saw more than 151 million visitors. And while the parks are fun, they can certainly be pricey. The average American spent about 700 bucks on admissions and fees in 2019. So to make the most out of your next visit, theme park expert Nikita Metellus is here with helpful hacks and ways to save you some money. Nikita. Thanks for joining us. These are important questions, especially for families. Let's start with the big ticket item, pun intended, park tickets. They're so expensive between that and the hotel room. It feels like you've already spent a fortune before you get to the park. So how do people save on these basic costs? Well, the first thing I always recommend is just to set a realistic budget. And once you have that budget, then go to the discounted theme park ticket websites. They usually have a partnership with some of the theme parks. Also, authorized vacation planners where you can scoop up that theme park ticket with your hotels all into one package. And they can also find deals for you directly from the parks with their relationships with the park at no additional cost to you. What about the theme park affiliated hotels? Usually they're pricier than the other options that are nearby, but are they worth it? They can be worth it if you are staying with a theme park hotel that's owned and operated by the theme park then definitely the perks of getting into the park early to start your day getting free transportation can help but if you mm -hmm. are more of a budget friendly family then i recommend using some of the affiliate hotels that also mm -hmm. offer free shuttle but you may not be able to get into the park early but you'll be mm -hmm. able to still get your transportation sometimes they offer free breakfast so definitely mm -hmm. do not forget about those offerings Okay, yeah, those are good perks. So we spent the money on the tickets, we've picked our hotel. How do we make the most of our time when we're at the park? Before you even get there, listen to me. You have to plan. You have to know what your must-do rides and attractions are. And then many of the theme parks have things like apps that you can download to get familiar with all of the offerings there. You can book your reservations through there. You can see the wait times. And do not be that person who gets the app right at the park. You don't want to do that. You want to get familiar with the app before you get there, but definitely get there early. Know what you want to ride. That way, once you get all your rides done, you can go watch a parade, watch a show, or go back on mm -hmm. some of your list you attract. I love that. So download the app, spend time getting familiar with it, and you have to kind of have a game plan, right? What do you What do you Absolutely. think about the ideal amount of time to spend at a theme park? Whether you're traveling like as a group of adults, it might be different than if you've got little ones. Yes, if you have little ones, then you know that they have to have their nap time. They have to stay on their schedule. So if you do have little ones, I do recommend that you get there still early and then go back to your hotel room to kind of, kind of take a break, make sure they can refuel fuel up and then come back. And then if you are an adult going with a group of adults or a solo traveler and you love theme parks, then I could say that about six to 10 hours is good for an adult going to the parks. If you are a big family and this is your big vacation, then you might as well do the whole day. Most of the parks are open for 12 hours. You get there in the mm -hmm. morning, like I said, take a break at your hotel, come back in the evening and catch all the evening shows and just close out the park. Yeah, I love that, maximize your time. Okay, before I let you go, tell me about the hottest attractions for visitors this summer and the food. What, what do people need to know about like trying to get like the, the foods that are so good? Well, I'll start with the food because I love the food part. 
Well, when I go to resorts or theme parks like Universal Orlando Resort, I like to first stop off at the Voodoo Donut. That's kind of like my little mm -hmm. thing I like to do. But when I'm in the park, I love to get a crepe from the Central Park Crepery. And if you are a Harry Potter fan, and even if you're not, you still have to get that famous butterbeer, no matter how you want to take it. I like mine hot and sometimes ice mm -hmm. cream, but if you are a true classic person, then you have to get that butterbeer. When I'm at Epcot, I'm getting the avocado margarita. That's just my adult take. Oh. As far as Ride, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Universal, mm -hmm. and Star mm -hmm. Wars Ride of the Resistance at Disney. Absolutely incredible attractions. And you're making us want to go. Nikita, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We should also mention NBC News and Universal are owned by the same parent company. All right, everyone, that is our time for now. For all of us here at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. Until next time, happy travels. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Now everybody loves a hearty meal. But when the cooking is done, nobody loves doing dishes. So today we're making three delicious recipes that all come together in just one pot. I'm making a one pan chicken pot pie with some of my favorite spring veggies. I'm whipping up Tuscan style tortellini soup. And I'm making my flavor-packed Thai-inspired green curry noodles. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Growing up, it was always a treat for me and my siblings to make frozen chicken pot pies when my parents were out to dinner and we had to fend for ourselves. And today I will be making a more grown up version of this classic comfort food. This recipe has some of my favorite veggies and I know your whole family will absolutely love it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our onion going. Look at that stunning dice. Move those onions off to the side to prep the rest of our veg. This is fennel, gorgeous, gorgeous fennel. Bulb, fronds, and the stems, okay? So I really love using fennel in honestly any kind of cooking. I promise you all of that anise flavor is going to mellow out beautifully once it hits the pan. We have these fronds here. We're gonna just give them a nice rough chop. So we've taken the stem off and then I'm going to cut it in half like so. We'll go from the top to the back like so. And then rock it through from the back to the front. Let's quickly do our celery. And the theme here is green. I don't know if you can tell. All green veggies, that's what we're working with today. Okay, finally our garlic clove. And you also don't have to worry about chopping this too fine. So let's get to sauteing. We are going to add in a nice hunk of unsalted butter. We are also going to add in some olive oil. Once it is all melted and as it starts bubbling like so, that is when we know to add in our veggies. These will all go in at the same time. These veggies are really running away from me here. <laughs> okay. We want these veggies to break down, to caramelize a bit, to develop their flavor. And while that is going, we are going to get to work on the rest of our veggies, because believe it or not, we are adding even more vegetables to this already full vegetation experience. All right, so next up we have our kale. This is lacinato kale, also known as dinosaur kale. It is flat, it's not as crazy and curly like curly kale. And my favorite way to prepare it is I will take the bottom right where the stem is, grab either side, 
and then take my finger and pull that stem right through. And there you go. Okay, so while this is going, we are actually going to add even more flavor with some fresh thyme. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to bunch it on up in pieces, slice it thin, just like so. How about that? Fabulous. We're gonna get to work on our chicken. A great shortcut that I love to do is I love to use a rotisserie chicken. I am pulling off this skin just because we don't necessarily need it and we can chop this up. My siblings prefer white meat and I prefer dark meat with chicken, so it's good. We'll have a little for me and then the rest for my sibbies. Okay, looking good. So now that our veggies are ready to rock, it is time to create what I like to call an almost roux. <laughs> So we are just going to add in this all-purpose flour, but it's really important when you add in flour to a pot pie, to anything as a thickening agent, that you take the time to cook the flour down. So we wanna just keep cooking this down for about two to three minutes. Okay, it's time to thicken this up. We're gonna start by doing one cup of the stock. We wanna make sure that all of this flour breaks down. And now what we wanna do is we wanna bring this to a simmer to continue thickening it a bit more. Next up, we are going to add in our kale to wilt it and to also thicken up our mixture a bit. And now that this looks nice and thick, we're going to add in our final ingredients, our peas, our fennel fronds, and our chopped up chicken. This is my favorite thing to do with a homemade pot pie. I love using puff pastry, store-bought. I'm taking a little bit of all-purpose flour and just giving it a nice light dusting. Open it on up. This is one sheet of puff pastry. We're gonna give this one more light dusting of flour. Take your rolling pin. The main thing here is to make sure that you roll it out so that it fits whatever pan you are working with. And we're just going to fold it bring our pan over, lift it up, and then open it up like a book, and dress it right over the top. You're cute, you're gorgeous, I love ya. We wanna make sure that we have about one inch around our cast iron. And you can just trim the corners off of that pastry. I have egg wash right here. And the reason why we're popping this onto the top and brushing it over the top of our pastry is because if we don't, what's gonna happen is our pastry is gonna end up looking a little sad. So we're just taking a pastry brush and really delicately brushing that egg wash over the top and the sides of the pastry. Okay, we wanna make sure it has some ventilation. You wanna make sure that you have at least three, maybe four, right in the center of that pie so that steam can escape. And then my favorite little extra layer of pizzazz is to take some flaky salt and sprinkle it over the top of this pot pie. So this is going to go into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes and just check about halfway through. Oh man, our pot pie has cooled. We want it to cool for about 10 minutes. 
after it comes out of the oven. And now there's only one thing left to do, slice it up and give it a taste. And then we're gonna give this a nice big scoop. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mmm. It is unbelievable how food can instantly transport you back to a moment. It is just bursting with spring beauty and energy. I love it. One more bite, because we deserve it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Look who's back together. Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. I absolutely love Italian food, just like everybody else. It's so comforting and it always tends to hit the spot. Now with minimal prep, my tortellini soup is just a thing to make at the end of a long day because it's just in one pot. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the big pot that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna set it onto a medium high heat. Next, we're gonna move on to the sausage. This is spicy Italian sausage. I think it adds a lot of flavor. Just remove the casing and the sausage. Well, sticky little thing, isn't it? <laughs> then we're just gonna put this right into the pan right now. Squeeze that sausage right on out, right into that pot. Right now, I'm breaking up the meat, so that way it'll be dispersed, but cook a little bit faster. Let's move on to chop up our veggies. So I've got some onion here. We're just gonna dice this up, slice it in half. And you can do generous chunks. There we go. Moving on, we got some fresh tomatoes here. Gonna dice these up as well. All right, and you know what? I'm thinking our sausage is about finished. Yeah, it's great. It's got a great color on there. We're gonna take a slotted spoon and we're gonna remove the sausage because we don't wanna take out the oil. We want the oil from that sausage to help out with the flavor. There we go. Now, since there's not a lot of oil left after the sausage, I am gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add in my onions, and we're gonna saute those. You know I am a garlic lover, and if you love Italian food, you gotta be a garlic lover too. Now, got some carrots here. Because they're so small, I'm not gonna peel them. I'm just gonna begin to dice them up as well. But just make sure you wash your carrots. Give that a nice stir. All right. In goes the garlic. Slide that on in. Give it another stir. And we're gonna cook this for about one minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna deglaze the bottom of this pot. We're gonna do that with some red wine because we're fancy here in the Today All Day Kitchen. 
So grab your favorite red wine. I'm gonna be using a blend, and we're gonna add about a half a cup. There we go. And if you wanna toast yourself during this recipe, I won't judge you. That's your business. Mm -hmm. Let this simmer down. And in go the tomatoes. I'm gonna let the tomatoes rest in here with the onions and the red wine and garlic. Let that simmer for a minute. I'm gonna finish preparing the rest of our veggies. Basil. I'm gonna roll them up, snack the leaves. And I'm just gonna just like this. Beautiful. That should be enough. I'm gonna reserve some too for garnish at the very end. Check back in on our tomatoes and onions and look at this. You can see how thick it is. It's kind of slushy. That's exactly the texture that we want. I think this looks good. What about y'all? Yeah, Kevin, it looks real good. Okay, let's start to bring everything else together. I'm gonna add in some oregano. Adding back in the sausage as well. Give this a good stir. And then our stock. Pour it in. This is some chicken stock. Another pinch of salt. Some black pepper. And lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle in some basil. Boom. Did we want some heat? Yeah, Kev, we want the heat, bring the heat. All right, some red pepper, boom. I'm gonna crank up the heat so that it comes to a boil and then as soon as it starts to boil, you're gonna wanna reduce the heat down to a simmer. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're going to take some kale. All I'm doing is folding the you know, kale over, and I'm going to take out the big stem. Take it at the very top, and just drag the knife along the stem. Comes right on out. And then just do a chop just like this. This is great. Still simmering. Ready, in, go. The kale. Beautiful. And this is some cheese filled tortellini. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes. You can cover and let this simmer. All right, I think this is done. I'm gonna turn off the heat of our pot and we're gonna plate this amazing one pot Tuscan tortellini soup. And this soup deserves the good bowls, okay? I'm just gonna say that, it deserves it. Get a big scoop, 
Oh yeah. We've got the color from the carrots, color from the kale, and color from the tomatoes. Mm, beautiful. Let's garnish pepper. A little bit of dried oregano. If you want some, beautiful. Basil, there we go. And look at this, holy smokes. Cannot wait to devour this soup. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh my Lord, that is a delicious soup. Now, I'm not team soup only in the wintertime. I'm team soup all year long. You wanna come home to a nice warm hug. This is it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. I know making a curry from scratch might sound intimidating, but I promise it's actually pretty easy. After trying this recipe, you may never go back to that jarred stuff. I'm gonna kick things off with my curry paste. Traditionally, this is made in a mortar and pestle, but this girl is busy, so we're gonna put everything in a food processor and it comes out just great. So we're gonna first start with some coriander stems. So get those right into the food processor. Then we're gonna use one small shallot or a half of this large one here. And I like to quarter it so it's easier to blend up in the food processor. So get that right in. And then we're gonna use four cloves of garlic. One Thai green chili. You could just take the stem right off like this. And you could cut this in half if you'd like so it's easier to blend. And then we're gonna use one inch piece of fresh ginger. Fresh is key. The traditional ingredient in this is usually galango, but it's not readily available, so ginger is the next best substitute. And the best way to peel ginger is using a spoon, because if you run your spoon right against the meat of the ginger, the peel comes right off. How cool is that? So pop that right in. Next, we want half a stalk of fresh lemongrass. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. And we're gonna get that beautiful lemongrass right in. I'm using one fresh lime. Let's get that all in. So then we wanna just cut this in half. You can use your hand or a little citrus squeezer and give it a good squeeze. And we have a few more remaining ingredients. We want some toasted cumin seeds and some toasted coriander seeds. Then we wanna add a pinch of white pepper. This is deceiving, white pepper is quite spicy, so a pinch is more than enough. And then a pinch of kosher salt. And we're gonna whiz this up. And just keep pulsing. Okay, so I think we're good. 
So I'm gonna get it out into a bowl and then I'm gonna grab my veggies, tofu, and noodles for the rest of my recipe. So we've had our tofu here sitting in some paper towel. We've pressed it so you'll notice that it's a little bit drier from when you open the package. So I like small cubes because I want them to be bite-sized and able to fit on my spoon or fork. Plus, if you make them smaller, then they'll cook better and crisp up. Okay, the next step is tossing them in some cornstarch. So you just wanna lightly coat them. Great, so let's turn our skillet on. And we're gonna wanna get this to about a medium high heat. Coat the bottom with some neutral cooking oil. I'm gonna start giving them a flip. This is what you want. This is gonna be flavor packed. These are looking great. You could see the color, the crisp. So I'm gonna get them removed and then start prepping my veg. First, I'm gonna slice my onion. We're just using a medium to large yellow onion. So I'm gonna do a quick slice on each half. So our onion is done. And next we wanna do one long red chili. These actually aren't that spicy, but they're gonna add a lot of flavor and they're gonna look beautiful against the green curry. So we're just gonna give a quick slice on this, just basically thin circles. Great. And next we wanna slice a green bell pepper. This one's a big one. So cut this in half. And I just like to scoop out the center to clean it up. And then similarly, we're just going to run our knife through it like the way we did for the onion. Great. And lastly, we have some carrot. We're gonna try doing this julienne because I like it to match the onions and the peppers, okay? And now the one pan or pot magic begins. So we're gonna take the same pan that we use to crisp up our tofu in. While that's heating up, we're gonna coat it with a little bit more of that neutral oil. And now I'm gonna add in all of my veggies. Ooh, I always love that sizzle. Mm -hmm. So we wanna saute it for about five minutes or so. And to help with the process, we're gonna add in a bit of salt. The salt is gonna help release all of the moisture in the vegetables. Now that our onions are looking a little bit translucent, it's time for our curry paste. It smells so good. We're gonna let this cook down for about three to four minutes. Once you notice that the vegetables have softened and it's browning on the bottom, it's time for our liquids. So we're gonna add in about two cups of water. And some full fat coconut milk. And now is when we add our green peas. Stir this all together. And then we wanna bring this to a slow simmer. So while we wait for our curry to come to a slow simmer, I wanna talk about the noodles. So I'm actually using edamame noodles, which are noodles made out of edamame beans. They're super delicious and they're a beautiful green color. Okay, so our curry is simmering. So now it's time to add our noodles. You just wanna make sure all the noodles have some moisture on them. They're all covered with the liquid. Great. Then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna clean up some of these bowls and get ready to taste. Okay, so our noodles have been simmering for about five minutes, so let's give it a check. These will look so good. Notice that all the liquid has reduced 
but it's still nice and saucy and the veggies are still vibrant in color. All right, let's get it plated. So beautiful. I love the way the carrots look in this because they really add that pop of color. Okay, now for our tofu. We haven't forgotten about that. So they've actually cooled off here, which is great because now they're nice and crispy. And then we're gonna add some of our garnishes. So we have some fresh lime, some fresh coriander, and we reserved some of our fresh red chili. Look at this, can you believe this was made in only one pan? I just have to give this a taste. Are you kidding me? It's like I'm walking the streets of Bangkok. It's so vibrant, it's so fragrant. You should always eat with your eyes first. And this is certainly a dish that I'm eating with my eyes first. I'm fashion and beauty editor Chassie Post, and I know trends. So each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll love in Style Finder. I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm lifestyle expert Jen Fallick, and I love trying out products and finding the best versions of everyday items and elevated essentials. A curated list of better basics. This is Shop All Day Summer Beauty Refresh. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, contributing editor, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. We're right in the middle of summer, and it's about that time when we want to lighten our makeup routine and take care of our skin while spending time in the sun. We're talking about rollers made with volcanic rock to help oily skin to the latest and innovative ways to apply lip color. So stay with us as we not only show you our fab finds, but tell you why we've chosen these products for your beauty refresh. And see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. And we've created a text to shop feature. Simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. I'm excited to show you some of the hottest beauty products of the season. Let's get started with our skin. And since it is summer, the scent, of course, is watermelon. So first up from Ulta Beauty, we have the Watermelon Sleeping Mask. And I mean, everybody loves a little summer watermelon. Well, turns out, so does our skin. Watermelon beauty products are actually a huge trend right now. And actually, watermelon fruit has been used as a beauty care secret for centuries. I mean, it's super hydrating, thus the name watermelon, right? And it also has loads of vitamin E and it's anti-inflammatory. So we were thrilled when we found this little mask that would bring all the watermelon goodness to our skin very easily. So here's how you use it. You just put it on before you go to sleep and you sleep with it, you wake up in the morning and your skin feels hydrated, it's got a glow, it's revitalized. So this is a great little affordable find. Next, we've got an eye mask that I like to call a little miracle, which you have seen all over social media. Now it's from Wander Beauty and they're called the Baggage Claim Eye Masks. And honestly, you can check your under eye baggage at the door with these. They're a multitasker. And what they're gonna do is not only do they reduce puffiness, they also reduce fine lines and wrinkles, they brighten, they hydrate. There's almost nothing these little guys don't do. I mean, they're gold. <laughs> How cool is that? And when I use them, they actually make me feel like giving myself a treat. And that's really great because it's affordable. I don't always have to go to a luxurious spa to feel like I'm taking care of myself. Six come in a pack and these are truly the next level in eye masks. So next up, we have the Brazilian Boom Boom Cream. I know it looks like it says Bum Bum on the little jar here, but in Brazil, they pronounce it boom boom. And trust us, the boom boom in Brazil is a national obsession. And it actually inspired this product. So this product 
is the best-selling body cream at Sephora five years in a row. And what people love so much about it is it tightens and smooths the skin. And it does that using caffeine. Yes, the active ingredient is caffeine found in guarana. So now that we've got, you know, our skin feeling smooth and tight, how about a little bit of a tan, but a safe glow? And that is Bondi Sands. This self-tanner, to say that it is popular, is an understatement. This is a self-tanner that has a social media following. It is TikTok famous, but here is why it's so popular. First of all, it is so easy to apply. You just use this fabulous little mitt. This mitt, this is also a number one bestseller. And you use it and you get a flawless finish every time. Also, this product, it is never orange, it's never streaky, and it is just such a natural glow. So we are really loving this for summer because you can get that great glow without damaging your skin. So we've talked about the body, so now let's talk about the brows, which are such a big trend. And I was thrilled to find this product. It's from Wonder 2, and it's called the Wonder Brow Waterproof Eyebrow Gel. And oh my goodness, people are loving it so much because it's so easy to use. Those bigger, fuller brows that everybody's uh, wearing now, you know, that are such a big trend, they are gorgeous. I love them. But what about people like me who were not born with big, gorgeous, full brows? So I was thrilled to find this because I tried it and it actually fills in my sparse brows and it looks totally natural. Plus, I mean, it took almost no time. This product is also waterproof and smudge proof. I've tried, you know, with the precision pencils of before to create a brow. I walk outside in the humidity and the heat and the first chance I see a mirror, my entire eyebrows have melted off. Well, no more. This stuff is not going anywhere. It comes in five different shades and it is a game changer. So last but not least, you guys are not gonna believe the innovations in lip color technology. I could not believe this product. It's called the Wonder Blading Peel and Reveal Lip Color. So let me explain what this is. So it's like a semi-permanent color that transfers onto the top layer of your lip. But listen to how they do it. They use what's called liquid blading technology. So you take a little lip mask, you apply it to the lip, and then you mist it with an activating mist. And so then you wait 30 seconds and you pull the lip mask off and you've got this gorgeous, semi-permanent color. It is smudge proof. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Let's run through all the products one more time. And if you saw anything here you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we shared on today's show. So we've got the Ulta Beauty Watermelon Sleeping Mask, the Baggage Claim Eye Masks, the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Body Cream, the Bondi Sands Self Tanning Foam, and Bondi Sand Self Tanning Mitt, the Wonder Brow Waterproof Eyebrow Gel, and the Wonder Skin Wonder Blading Lip Peel and Reveal Color. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Adriana Brock is talking to entrepreneur and author Dulce Candy about getting that light glowing summer look. Stay with us. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Well, maybe Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. 
And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. <laughs> it's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Who comes back together? Oh, I'm so, so happy. I That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hi, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, Shop Today Editorial Director, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must have items to shop for right now. Our show today is all about the best beauty products for summer, so I'm super excited to talk to someone who is definitely in the know on this topic, entrepreneur and author Dulce Candy. And don't forget, there's the QR code at the bottom of your screen. You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it and shop these products right now. Or you can simply text SHOP to the number below to shop everything we're sharing with you today. Hey, Dulce, how are you? It's great to see Hi. you. <laughs> Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So we've known you for like more than a decade right now for doing your makeup tutorials on YouTube. And you have millions of followers, a lot of devoted fans. But before you got into the beauty business, you were actually in the US Army. How do you go from being in the Army to pivoting to the beauty business? I just feel like I got really lucky because I started at the very conception of YouTube and I discovered this community uh, full of women and a little bit of men at that time who were just so passionate about discussing makeup and anything related to beauty. And I just felt like since I couldn't really express that side of me, being a woman in the military, I always got in trouble for like, putting a little bit too much mascara or getting my nails done. Um, I just felt really at home within this community um, back in 2008. Wow, so you have a ton of tutorials, like everything from false lashes to bronzer to summer makeup, of course. You must have a most memorable look from all your tutorials. Which one would you say is your favorite? Honestly, one of my favorites, I was wearing like this really bright orange eyeshadow, which I normally don't do on an everyday basis, of course, but I just love to express myself through makeup and use it as a creative art. So whenever I have the time to really get creative and use really bright colors, those to me are like my favorite moments. That's so cool. I mean, that's what makeup's all about, right? Like having a little yeah. bit of fun. Do you have yeah. any beauty regrets? Cause I know I've had a few in my day <laughs> and I'm sure you have if you've made all this content. Honestly, I have so many, like a lot of my, like whenever I look back through my archives, there's so many cringy moments, um, <laughs> but I would have to say definitely just over tweezing my eyebrows and having them like really tiny is just, not a good look. <laughs> I feel like that's so relatable. We've all had like an eyebrow phase where something went wrong. I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk about summer makeup specifically. So a lot of people, it's hot outside. They wanna lighten up their look for the summertime. Do you have any makeup essentials that you swear by for like great, easy summer look? Yeah, I think for me, like the main focus is definitely the eye makeup. Um, 
I like to keep it very minimal. So I always love to start off with a nice buildable coverage, something very wearable and something that's not gonna look cakey as far as concealers. So this one is by CoverGirl. It's from their Clean Fresh line. And like I said, it's very buildable, very creamy. And you can either just swipe a few dots underneath your eye to look really refreshed and alive, which is something that I really love. And you can also amp it up if you just need a little bit more coverage. That's a great drugstore find. And I know you have another yes. affordable beauty find. It's the Pixie Mascara. Yes, this is one of my favorite mascaras by Pixie Beauty. This is the Large Lash Mascara. Um, um, especially for me since becoming a mom, I don't really have a lot of time to do like the strip lash. So this is gonna give you the look of like, fake lashes because it has a really incredible brush that is really going to give you a lot of volume length and it's also really nice if you wanna wear on hot days because it's not gonna melt. I love that. I'm all about like easy concealer, mascara, and you're out the door. Talk to me a little bit more about the, the bronzer you have here and you have the lip oil, which. These are pretty unique products that are perfect for summer. Yeah. For me, for the summertime, this is a product by Physicians Formula. It's the Sculpting Bronzer. And the reason I love this one in particular is because the formula is so easy to blend. You can just wipe it on your face and you're gonna get that beautiful bronzy look. It's also gonna give you a dewy effect because it's a cream product. So I think in the summertime specifically, you want your skin to be nice and dewy and hydrated. It's going you don't wanna have too much on. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I love this one. Yeah. And what about this lip oil? I've heard of lip gloss, but tell me about okay. this lip oil. The lip oil, this is incredible. This is a new product from Sigma Beauty. It's the Renew Lip Oils. Okay. And I have all four different colors here, but this is basically a mix between a lip balm, super hydrating lip balm, and a lip gloss. You're gonna have a beautiful, beautiful, glossy and hydrated lips throughout the day. What I love about them the most is that they actually match with your own specific skin tone because of the, the way that they're formulated. So they're gonna look completely different on everybody, but again, super wearable and just absolutely gorgeous. That's so unique. I also wanted to ask you, cause you were talking about how like you love this mascara cause you're a mom and you have like no time to get out the door. I'm a mom to be. So I'm looking for some beauty advice from you. What are some simple tricks for any busy woman who just wants to get ready for summer and get out the door? I would honestly say really focus on your skincare because okay. you're not going to have to worry too much about covering up way too many things with foundation and concealer. So if you really take care of your skin, you can literally just use a little bit of concealer and blend it out. Definitely add some mascara, a little bit of lip gloss, and you're out the door. I love it. It's all about simplicity. Thank yeah, you so really. much, Dulce. <laughs> it was so great chatting with you. Hey, thank, thank you, you for so all much. your great tips. Thank you, have a beautiful day. So you're covered on the makeup, but now we're featuring the trending tools to apply it and take it off. Starting with this 14 piece brush set. So no makeup beauty routine is complete without the right tools. And this set right here is a today.com reader favorite. You get 14 brushes for just $10. People love it. It is such an incredible value with brushes that you're actually gonna use. And you know what? This pack is so big, you can even break it up and give some to your friends. It has everything from a foundation brush to a bronzer brush. I mean, it even has a spoolie so you can fluff up your eyebrows in no time. We love this one. The next one we have is the Luxe Brush Cleaner and Spinner. It's gonna keep your makeup brushes super clean and you need that to get a perfect application every time. So there's no excuse. All you have to do is use one of the collars that it comes with, you pop it on and you literally just push a button and it does all the work for you. So there's no effort required here. It's so easy to use. Not only does it wash them, it also dries them for you. So can't go wrong here. And lastly, when you're ready to take all your makeup off, skip the wasteful wipes and try this today.com favorite. It is the original makeup eraser. And this little towel is gonna remove all your makeup with just water. And it's not gonna irritate your skin. It's gonna remove the most stubborn waterproof makeup, whether it's mascara or eyeliner. All you have to do is use the short side with all these short fibers to scrub off the makeup. And then you use the other side to wipe it off. It's so easy to use. We really love this tool. Let's run through all the products one more time. And if you saw anything here that you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below and shop all the products we shared on today's show. We have the Physicians Formula Organic Wear Sculpting Bronzer, the Sigma Beauty Renew Lip Oil, the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Concealer, Pixie Beauty Large Lash Mascara, 
the BS Small 14-piece brush set, the Lux Makeup Brush Cleaner and Spinner, and the original Makeup Eraser. Up next, Chassis Post is featuring the latest beauty trends in Style Finder. Stay tuned. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. you got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great Thanks. workout. It's yeah. everything That's you need. Right. What comes back together? Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy! That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Shop All Day. I'm lifestyle expert Jen Fallick, and I'm here to show you some useful products that will make your makeup routine so much easier and solutions for your skin and hair after spending time in the sun. And see the QR code on the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. We've also created a text to shop feature. Simply text shop to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you. So let's get to it. First, let's get everything organized, okay? I just use something like this to organize my makeup. It sits right on my counter and I love it. This is so much better than your basic organizer. This is a 360 degree rotating makeup organizer. And the best part, it's got all of these adjustable shelves so you can really customize it to your needs. It can hold up to 30 makeup brushes, 20 skincare products, plus there's room for nail polishes, lip glosses, all the makeup essentials that you need. And so simple, all you do is give it a spin and you can find whatever it is that you're looking for on any given morning. It speeds up your routine, it makes your countertop look neat, and I also love that this is super easy to clean. Since it's acrylic, just a simple wipe down, and it's fresh like it's just brand new. Okay, let's face it, guys, we're gonna sweat this summer. It's inevitable. So, instead of your basic blotting papers, make sure that you've got this better basic on hand. This uses volcanic stone to soak up excess oil instantly. It's from Revlon, and it's a volcanic stone face roller. It works on all skin tones, and it's so simple to use. Basically, you just pop off the top. Anywhere that you see shine, I mean, I just used it earlier on my T-zone. It's gonna instantly magnetize away all the shine. The volcanic rock is what really makes this so special. It absorbs everything and it blends seamlessly. So even if you have makeup on, you can still use this over makeup. Again, it's gonna instantly mattify any shine. And I also love that it's reusable. This is almost like a face roller with benefits. Speaking of products with many benefits, I am a huge, huge, huge fan of MD Solar Sciences. Their sunblocks for me have always been a favorite 
especially lately, as you know, my skin changes a little bit. I love that this product is something that I can use, my kids can use. It's great for sensitive skin. It's the Tinted Mineral SPF 30. The tint actually works on all different skin tones. It blends right into your skin. The texture is really unlike any other sunscreen I've ever used. It's lightweight, it's almost like velvety. I am a huge fan, again, of the mattifying properties of it. The fact that the tint works on all skin tones as I get a little color, as we get deeper into the summer, I can still use this every single day. It pretty much is like my morning essential, afternoon touch-up and evening product all wrapped into one. Now onto something super cool and innovative. We all love that look of false lashes, but I gotta be honest, they're not easy to put on yourself. These are better than your basic false lashes. These are magnetic eyelashes. Now, it sounds crazy, a magnetic eyelash, false eyelashes that you can put on by yourself at home. Bear with me, I'm gonna give you the scoop. These things are great. Basically, they come with a magnetic liner. So the trick is in the liner, the liner magnetizes to the lashes. So you apply this just like you would an eyeliner. If you can apply eyeliner, you can apply these. You put this on your lash line, and then you've got all these different sets of lashes in here. They're reusable too, so you're getting 10 sets, but you can reuse them over and over again. You trim them to fit your eye. So it comes actually with a whole kit with these little scissors in there, so you can hold them up, just give them a quick snip on either side so that they fit your eye perfectly. Apply the liner let it dry, put the lash right up to the liner, press it in, and it magnetically sticks together. They're reusable and pretty much as foolproof as false eyelashes can get. Now we are moving on to your hair. So summer can do major damage on hair. I know for me, between the sun, pool, ocean, everything that's going on when you're outside having fun in the sun this summer, your hair pays the price. People are absolutely obsessed with this product. Besides the fact that it's safe for use on color treated hair, which I think is really important, especially in the summer. This protects your hair, so you're not gonna get as much hair breakage, your hair shouldn't be falling out as much, while also deep cleaning your scalp, and so it's gonna hydrate your hair. It kinda covers all the bases. Like with anything, you wanna check with your dermatologist before trying a new shampoo. It's a good one to try. Hair also can get really, really tangled in the summer. Between the pool, the ocean, I've gotta tell you, my six-year-old daughter has the most tangled hair I've ever seen in my entire life. So we are really excited to test this out. This is the Felicia Leatherwood Detangling Hairbrush. What's unique about this brush, besides the fun colors, which just kind of make me happy, this brush is bonded on three sides instead of four. So what that means is it can run through your hair without getting all twisted up. You get more flexibility with this. So if you've got a lot of tangles, this is gonna go through your hair much easier. I mean, my daughter has the most sensitive scalp. So whether you've got really kinky curly hair, even if you've got straight hair that tends to get knotted up every now and then, this is a great bet for getting those tangles out. Again, keeping your hair from getting extra damaged in a time of year when it tends to suffer the consequences of the season anyway. Huge trend that we're seeing right now in skincare overall is this idea of patches and overnight treatments. So this is the Mighty Patch. This is way, way better than your basic acne treatment, your basic gel, anything that you may use. Upgrade it with a patch. You can see here, they're just these teeny little patches that actually mattify on the skin. They stay on all night. It works over like six to eight hours. The ingredients in there are gonna help to reduce the appearance of a blemish. And then in the morning, when you wake up, you simply peel it off. They adhere right onto your face. You don't feel like you have something on. You don't feel self-conscious about it. They're not bothering your skin while you're trying to sleep. Instead, they're really just delivering great ingredients directly to where you need them to be. Six to eight hours a night, you'll wake up in the morning and you will be your one happy camper. And last but not least, as we are talking beauty sleep, this is the Bedshore Satin Pillowcase. So we all hear about the benefits of using silk and satin pillowcases for beauty sleep. It helps with hair, skin, all these different things. What I love about these is that satin is actually much more durable than silk. So this is gonna last you a long time. These are stain resistant, comes in all these really great colors. There definitely is something for everybody, no matter what your home decor looks like. And you can easily wash these at home. They're easy to clean, which with silk pillowcases isn't always the case. They're zipper free as well. So you don't have any zippers that are gonna snag on your skin, which again is huge if you're using a satin or silk pillowcase. You wanna make sure that you're getting all the benefits and your hair isn't getting tangled up in a zipper. The benefits of something like this are so expansive from anti-frizz for your hair, keeping your hair from breaking, 
wrinkles on your skin. I'm a side sleeper, so I tend to kind of wake up in the morning and if I'm not using a great pillowcase, my skin's all kind of wrinkled up. This is great for maintaining the integrity of your skin and also it's not gonna wipe off any skincare products that you're using. But again, since it's stain resistant, you don't have to stress out if you put on your, your moisturizer and go right to bed because it's really easy to clean these. Again, they're super durable. I love the pink, put them on every pillow. I feel like when I have guests, they always appreciate it too. And when you wake up in the morning, your hair still looks as good as it hopefully did the night before. So let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got 360 degree rotating makeup organizer, the Revlon Oil Absorbing Volcanic Face Roller, MD Solar Sciences Mineral Tinted Face Cream SPF 30, the Ari Shine 3D 5D Magnetic Eyelashes with Eyeliner Kit, the Anti Thinning Shampoo, Felicia Leatherwood Detangling Hairbrush, Mighty Patch, and Bed Shore Satin Pillowcase. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases that are made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on all your better basics. And for our show, it's been so much fun showing you our favorites. And if you missed something you liked, don't worry. All you gotta do is text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we shared today. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of SHOP All Day. Anna, thank you for doing this. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Thank you for having me. It's so great to meet you and also to be at the center of sort of this is your life with yeah. Hamilton across the street <laughs> and summer. Uh -huh. What is it like to be back on this street where so many good things in your life have happened to get you to the place you are now? It feels like coming home, you know. I'm very comfortable on 46th Street. Um, and I, I love where we are. We're on 45, you know. it's. Uh, they, they treat me like family here. They always have, you know. Saddled up at that bar a couple times, maybe? A couple. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe I was here nightly, but you know. But here's the real truth. When you do, when you do Broadway shows, the schedule is so odd. Like you exude or exert so much energy at night. Yeah. So theater people become night owls. So you have to find right. a spot that you can actually wind down. It is so exciting to be talking to you in this moment. I was just saying to have you where so many good things are happening for you right now, from winning the Golden Globe to hosting SNL to now having an Oscar nomination. Ooh. What does it feel like to hear all those things <laughs> like read that? back to you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that a good or? Oh, it's wonderful. It's phenomenal. Like there actually aren't enough adjectives to be frank. Um, it's an ongoing feeling, you know. It's, when I was a kid, I watched the Oscars, and I loved watching them, you know, make their acceptance speeches. And I was like, oh, everybody says, and I'd like to thank the Academy. And right. I, I kid you not, I would sit on the floor in my grandmother's living room and mouth the words, I'd like to thank the Academy did with you them. Really? I did, I really did. Oh my um, gosh. So to now be a nominee, it's, it's wild. But I'm also like, it's something I... I threw energy at for such a long time. And we were joking a minute ago about the term <laughs> overnight success. <laughs> yeah, it's because hilarious. Because some people may have just discovered you, yeah. but you've been at this for a little bit. What were those early years here? We were trying to find your place in Broadway, find your people, oh, totally. find that community. What was it like? Oh gosh, messy. Yeah. <laughs> it was messy. Um, but I mean messy in the way of like, I was just trying all the things, like I'd take all the classes, I'd go to all the auditions, even the ones I was painfully wrong for, some highly embarrassing moments. You know, I moved to the city when I was, what, 19 years old? You know, and I got my first job, th first bigger job three months after I'd been here, like pounding the pavement. So, and when I say pounding the pavement, like I lived in Sunnyside, Queens on my friend's couch and I'd get up at 5 a.m. and get myself ready and get myself to the non-equity lines and the, and the equity lines and I'd sign up for everything and just try to get seen, um, you know, and I could afford like 50 cent coffee and mm -hmm. maybe a muffin. I really did it. I'm actually very proud of this. I've been in six Broadway shows in a very short amount of time and I'm very aware that that's an anomaly in and of itself because most people just want one and some people just get one. And it, it's not that it, I have a carefully calculated career, but I, I believe in versatility. So once people do get to know my work, you will realize I don't do the same thing twice. 
even if I'm doing musicals, none of them are the same. Um, and now that I get to make on-screen work, I plan to keep that as a general rule. I don't want to do the same type of work because that means you're not growing and changing. And I thrive on challenge and growth and change. And I think it's a cool time for change right about now. Yeah. You know, the industry's changing, listening in a different way. And, you know, people like to, People are talking about firsts right now. I'm sure we'll get to this in the conversation, but might as well just like throw it Go on the it. table. You know, I've been told I'm the first Afro-Latina, the first openly queer woman of color to be nominated for an Oscar. I was like, that's cool. It is cool if those are indeed correct titles. <laughs> um, it's cool to be first because in my mind, that's indicative that there will be more, mm. you know, and it's, that's great change. It's a great mile marker for change, in my opinion. We were joking about your long climb up, but I think your mom says you came out of the womb dancing. Like, <laughs> this was always, yeah. we were always going to end up here in one form or another. As, Probably. With, with you as a performer of some kind. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I love the story. I think you were in a chorus line in high school. Yeah. And you came here to see a chorus line. And you looked around and you said, oh, these are my people. Right, like yeah. this is where I need to be. Now I got to figure out how to get back here. Yep. What was it about being around Broadway? What was that experience like for you to say, okay, this is it? When I came to see a chorus line, there was just an energy that I understood and that I felt like understood me. And also a chorus line, it's about dancers. It's about mm -hmm. a dancer's life and trials, tribulations, success. I saw myself, I finally saw myself and it wasn't about seeing necessarily skin color. It was just about seeing people who were doing the things I loved at the level that I believed I could do it at. But I knew I wanted to try to get there because I just needed to be with those people. And they are my people. They're still my people. Um, now I'm just trying to bring more of my people to the silver screen mm -hmm. in a new way. That doesn't mean I'll always make musicals, but I do think that there's a lot of untapped talent in this community, particularly in the dance community. Dancers make great actors. Sometimes you just gotta give them the tools and an opportunity to see what happens. Evidence sitting right here. I really believe you can see into a person's soul if you just see how they move. You know, I can tell if somebody's shy or if somebody's outgoing or if somebody's, you know, not on the up and up just by how you move. Body language is so telling and dance is even more so. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into, this system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Was the idea of taking on this beloved piece of art and song and dance and acting and West Side Story and everything that means to so many people, did that feel daunting or were you just excited to get a, a new look at it and a modern take on it? At the time, it didn't feel daunting. Um, don't get me wrong, I had <laughs> my fair share of run-ins with big fans of the film who were like, cool, 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 so don't, Bleep it up. And I was like, right. that's awesome. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> you take it in stride. You know, that's the thing when you you're reimagining an iconic character, it's you you have to acknowledge that there is an entire generation of people whom my predecessor, the great iconic Rita Moreno, will always be there, Anita. But that's the point of do making this this film in 2022, so that these characters can become beloved, so that the story can become beloved for an entirely new generation, many of whom had never heard of West Side Story right. and quite frankly didn't know who Rita Moreno was. And that's what's sad, in my opinion, because she changed the landscape and she opened so many doors, not only for Latinas, but for women in this industry. And the fact that more people d don't know who she is or that because of our film, she's now becoming even more well-known. That's both challenging for me to hear and also really exciting because mm. they should know who she is. Yeah. And in the same breath, I also get to be an Anita for a new generation. And for many Afro-Latinas, they get to see themselves in this work. And that's why you reimagine things because there's validity in every portrayal. There has to be. Otherwise, a text is not classic. Mm. If you cannot reinterpret it and infuse new energy into it and new meaning, it's not classic. Mm -hmm. It was a one hit wonder. And I don't think that's West Side Story. And I know you met with Rita and she sort of <laughs> gave her blessing. She Maybe, did. Have you been able to start a little friendship with her and hear about her experience in Hollywood and how things oh, are different yeah. now I mean, and how on. she hit that wall <laughs> even after the success of West Side Story? I'm kind of in awe of how open she is. If I had been through some of the things that she'd been mm. through, I don't know that I'd be as open. I might would be, what's the word, jaded. Um, she's not. And uh, I, I know I have benefited from time with her, you know. And I've said, we didn't actually speak about the character often, but she did share stories about her personal experience and her, her lived experience as a Puerto Rican in the United States. Um, and those were the stories that were actually most helpful to me when I was creating Anita. Mm. That's fascinating. Isn't it? It wasn't about, here's <laughs> it how wasn't I delivered about, here's this the line. Character. We're different than Anita's. There was never yeah. a world in which I was going to come in and duplicate what she had already done because what was the point? It was great. It, it is iconic. She won an Oscar for it. We've already awarded that portrayal so I don't need to go in and recreate it. It also became very personal for me because of how I grew up. My mother raised me as a single parent. You know, my father is Puerto Rican, so he wasn't really around. I didn't have direct access to my Hispanic heritage. So only in my adulthood have I been able to seek out community experiences in order to get to know this part of who I am. It was a very personal and kind of vulnerable experience for me to make this movie, but it's also the one of the greatest experiences I've ever had because it gave me access. It showed me how beautiful and wonderful and accepting this community can be. Making a, a, a beloved musical or a movie into a movie can be treacherous. Yes. Some of them don't make that leap well. Yes. Um, was it gratifying to get the response that you all have received to this? Answer to the question is absolutely. I'm, also, I'm an actor who also knows what it's like to be panned. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. I, I'm very aware of what it, what it can be to make art that is not well, well received. And, and it can be debilitating and it can really touch your will, like not your love for the craft, but just like rejection's hard. Rejection on a massively public scale is even harder. Mm. But if we wield it well, it can become the thing that challenges us to be better. Mm. Also, art is subjective. You're not going to please everyone. Right. So with West Side Story, for me, seeing all of this positive reception just makes me want to go, <laughs> it can be done. Mm. I really don't like it when people tell me something can't be done because I don't believe that. There's a part of me, like 19-year-old Ariana's like, no, tell me no, say it one more time, a little <laughs> louder, in the back. <laughs> because it, it was my fire for such a long time. You know, starting out as a dancer, 
really learning to sing because I have not always been a vocalist. And quite frankly, I wasn't always even a decent actress. The amount of work that goes into becoming, quote unquote, a triple threat, the amount of work it takes to conjure a performance like Anita because it is so multifaceted to recreate an iconic work like West Side Story and and then to have it received well, it's just, I kind of relish in it, I'm not gonna lie, because we've shown people it can be done and it can be done well. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Our world is facing some complex issues. Chuck Todd breaks them down. Every Thursday, a deep dive into a new subject. Instead of trying to cover a lot of topics in one episode, we're gonna focus on one and take a deeper look at how it impacts America. Exploring and explaining the critical stories that affect our future. Meet the Press Reports. Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. Streaming on NBC News Now and on demand next day on Peacock. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Our world is facing some complex issues. Chuck Todd breaks them down. Every Thursday, a deep dive into a new subject. Instead of trying to cover a lot of topics in one episode, we're gonna focus on one and take a deeper look at how it impacts America. Exploring and explaining the critical stories that affect our future. Meet the Press Reports. Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. Streaming on NBC News Now and on demand next day on Peacock. Well, it's interesting how you came to this extraordinary movie because it sort of blends your life as a Broadway actor into, yeah. into movies, which is that you were in Summer. Yeah. And you get a phone call that a certain Steven Spielberg wants to see you. <laughs> like tomorrow, I think, he wants yeah. to see you. Well, and the weird thing was, I didn't even know he was going to be there. Like, Cindy Tolan, our incredible casting director, called and was like, just come in, just come in. Did she tell you what it was for specifically? I knew it was for West Side Story. Right. I, and I knew I was going to be asked to sing and dance, and they wanted me to read the sides. And I was like, these are very long sides, so please know. Um, I would be happy to come back if you like what I do, but I, I don't have the time. I gotta go home, eat a chicken breast, and go to sleep so that I can get up and, you know, dance whatever I'm asked to, to dance and execute it well. Um, and she was like, don't worry about it, I got, I got your back. And then I got there and discovered that Stephen was actually on the premises and very much part of the audition. Ariana, I didn't know. She just came in. She was one of thousands of people that came in. And I danced, and he enjoyed it. And I, he asked me to sing, and I sang, and they enjoyed that. And then, you know, he asked me to, if I would read. And I just said, nope, <laughs> no, sir. And he looked at me like I had five heads. And Cindy Tolan, our casting director, came in and was like, we spoke about Ariana, she's starring in a show, she just needs a little more time to be truly prepared. And he said, so you're not going to read? And I said, no, again. <laughs> and he's like, but you will come back. And I said, I'd be honored. But that took some courage. I did it because I actually understood that as a woman of color, when you walk into a room like that, you better be prepared. And if you're not, like that's, that's a missed opportunity. It's a blown opportunity. And because we get so few opportunities, you can't afford to not present well or present, represent yourself well. It's just not something you can do. Um, and I al already felt like it was a long shot anyways, because when I walk in the room, people are like, she's African-American, she's black. And I was like, I'm black, I'm also Afro-Latina. 
And it's been something that's been hard throughout my career because people don't, people don't seem to understand that you can be both. You know, having Hispanic heritage can mean a multitude of things. Yeah, all that to say I thought I was a long shot and instead it ended up being a strength for me. And they probably respected you because what you were saying in that moment is, this is so important to me, I want to get this right. I want to get it right. Right. Yeah. And then you get a phone call in a nail salon. Yeah. That changes your life. Yes. So the lady behind the counter was very kind and she like swiped for me and helped me pick it up. Hi, I have Steven Spielberg for you. He was like, well, I just sort of was wondering if you would be my Anita. (laughs) He was very clear to, um, to let me know that not only was I his choice, but I was the studio's choice. And they were very um, eager to get behind me and make me feel supported, which they did and still do to this day. And what did your mom say when she got that news? Given all you all, two of you have been through together and building your career and moving to dance and perform and all that. Yeah. What was that like for her? What I recall was she was like, oh Lord. <laughs> Well, that's very big. <laughs> my mother is not a stage mom. Mm-hmm. I wish I could tell you she was like the quintessential dance mom. She was. She was just the antithesis of it. She said, here's your costumes, your makeup's in your bag, good luck. And then she would go and grade papers uh, while I, you know, became an independent young woman. It's the best thing she ever did for me, honestly. I was going to say, that's probably why you ended up where you are. Yeah. And when she hears about things like an Oscar nomination or mom, I'm going to host SNL in a couple of weeks. Oh. Did she take that in stride or? <laughs> you know what? When my Oscar nom came in, uh, she called and all I heard was Wah! And she was in class. She was teaching. My mom's a public school yeah. teacher and the kids in the back were all whooping and oh. shouting and cheering. And so it was actually really cool. She was like, I can't believe it. You did it. And, that's when I started getting a little misty-eyed because I was like, that is really cool, you know? I was like, I, I did do something. I did yeah. that. I earned that. Um, it's lovely. You would mentioned growing up your mom, mm-hmm. with your mom, single mother, yeah. in North Carolina. Yeah. What was that like as you showed talent at a pretty young age? What was your childhood like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very lucky. I had a childhood that was filled with angels that showed up to um, support me and my mom. And, um, you know, being a first time teacher in a small rural North Carolina town, she didn't make a lot of money. So we figured out ways, you know, um, that I could dance. The dance owner, right, the owner of my dance studio, Dory Light of Venner, um, she scholarshiped me for part of it because she recognized my talent, realized how hard my mom was working and, and help me continue to study, you know. I'm really lucky that those angels showed up for me um, and that my mom's always been supportive, my entire family, you know. And isn't it at moments like this where you think about all those people? You're gonna be at the Oscars on the red carpet, they're gonna say your name. Okay. And the dance teacher who gave you a partial scholarship helped to get you there, your mom, obviously, yeah. your grand, like all those people yeah. nudged you to that place. Well, and that's the thing, you think about like, awards and whatnot, and I'm just so aware of it. I wouldn't have anything of what I have without those folks. And my community may not look like everyone else's, but it's mine, and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them, I'm proud of my experiences, proud of my background, and I am deeply proud of who I am. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking Yeah. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. What comes back together? Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you.
Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Wait, is it still here? It's there! It's there! That's me! That's Not you! Here. Oh my it's gosh. It's been there for forever. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. I hope you have a, that poster up somewhere. No, I actually don't have a copy of that. We need to get you one of those. <laughs> well, maybe one day. You know one of my favorite little details, and it means nothing? These lights. I've always loved them. Oh, it's, cool. They just feel very quintessentially like welcome to a theater. Yes. And then you also like, it's always about the Broadway lights, right? Whether right. it's a footlight or a chandelier. Right. Or these little welcoming lights. This is it. I love them. We are across the street from the Rogers Theater. Yeah. A little show called Hamilton. But your original cast. I am. Did you know at the outset back at the public that you were on to something special before the rest of the world caught oh, on to yeah. it? Oh, yeah. I don't think there's a single person who was a part of that original company who didn't understand from even the reading or the workshop that this was special. It's impossible to calculate the full impact of this piece. You know, it really was like a hurricane, you know. I, you know, being in the ensemble, it gave me sort of a purview. I watched my friends and my colleagues become rock stars. I learned a lot from their experience, um, you know, but with great joy and great success comes great challenge as well. So it's a balancing act. It was a balancing act for them. It also taught me that it is imperative that you know your worth and you do not accept discounts. And that's probably the greatest lesson I learned from my time in Hamilton. Was that from watching what everyone was going through personally Yeah, and what time? we collectively went through, you know. When you do have a group of creators that are truly firing on all cylinders, they at the, they're at the top of their game. The game actually becomes how do we make it better? How do we continue to compete with ourselves so that we're upping the ante, serving the piece? We're not gratuitously telling this story. We are making a work of art. Mm. You know, it's, it's challenging. It's hard. But I can tell you something else. From great discourse comes great art. And Hamilton is that. What was it like in those days <laughs> on 46th Street? It, the, they had to shut down the street and there were yeah. people waiting to see you guys come in and come out at the stage door. And it's that crazy. was every single day. Mm -hmm. And it just got bigger and bigger and bigger as it went. What was yeah. that like as an actor to have that kind of fan base and that kind of response to it? It was cool. Because it brought such pride and joy and, and validity to what we do, you know. Hamilton changed the game a bit because it reminded folks just how powerful theater is and how mainstream it can be. Um, commercial, the political implications for Hamilton were absolutely astounding. I've never seen so many public servants, politicians, some of whom I personally agreed with, and some of them I didn't <laughs> showed up to our show, but they they received its message. Yeah. That's what's cool. You've gone on to such great things, obviously, since Hamilton, including the prom. Was that a fun experience for you? Oh, of course it was fun. It was terrifying in the best way, but um, it was also my first um, movie-making experience in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, playing scenes with Kerry Washington, yeah. who actually was very much the representation I had. First time I saw her in Save the Last Dance, mm -hmm. beautiful black girl with a fro, I was like, that's me, you know? Gotta be, the way you talk about Kerry Washington, to think that you are that person. Oh God. That you're that person for some young actor right now. Does that feel overwhelming? Great? You know what I wanna show people, young people especially, they have possibility and they can do anything. That's what I want to show them. You better work for it because nobody owes you anything and they certainly not gonna hand you nothing. But if you work really hard and you challenge yourself and you're actually nice to people, what a novel idea! That you actually 
can achieve your dreams. I know you've got a lot in the pipeline right now, but yeah. as you look out with this new platform that you've earned, yeah. what else is out there? What are you looking at? It's a vast horizon. <laughs> no. It um, is actually, there's a lot you could do. I know, I said it jokingly, but I was like, no, it, it actually is a truth. And that's something I'm adjusting to, having choice. I am a triple threat. I'm mm -hmm. good at doing things at the same time. I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll create something. How about that? Okay, and very vague. I don't like established structures and I like building my own structure. So I'm interested in any and all things that allow me to build something for myself. And I'll tell you something right now, I'm not going to make any decisions right now because the moment I'm in is too wonderful to miss a moment of it. Mm. So I'm just going to be present. But when I have something to share, I'll share it. You have great perspective on all this. Well, I think we can all agree that one of the greatest words I've ever used is no. And um, it continues to be a really great word. I think more people should use it. Well, I hope you get the chance to say the words that you rehearsed on your grandmother's floor. It's <laughs> <That's> very scary. It's <laughs> a very scary thought, Willie. Oh, no! Putting it in the universe. <laughs> Let's just get it out there. Thanks. I said it, you didn't. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is great. Well, a big hello and happy Thursday to you all. Coming up on Popstar Plus today, we're celebrating Broadway week on today. It's been so much fun. We're shining a light this time on the musical Mrs. Doubtfire, which is incredible. That's coming up. Plus, Chris Pratt reveals what you can expect from the third and final installment of the Jurassic World franchise. And then later, a 90s throwback featuring the one and only George Clooney ahead of his birthday. But first, here are today's pop star headlines. First up, Dolly Parton, the legendary musician, has been voted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We know this now, despite previously asking to respectfully bow out of the competition for the honor. NBC Morning News Now anchor Joe Fire, kind enough to join us today. Joe, good morning. Hey, good morning. So Joe. Dolly is part of a really impressive Hall of Fame class here. It includes Pat Benatar, Duran Duran. I think we have a Duran Duran fan here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eminem, Lionel Richie, and Carly Simon. She told Billboard she didn't mean to cause trouble or stir up any controversy when she initially asked to bow out of consideration. Now she says, I guess I'm a rock star. <laughs> Dolly Parton, the queen of country, will take her seat among rock royalty with her induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame class of 2022. Parton posted on social media, I am honored and humbled by the fact that I have been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Of course, I will accept it gracefully. It comes after a two-month back and forth between the self-described backwoods Barbie and the organization. hits include Jolie, I Will Always Love You, and 9 to 5, originally said she would respectfully bow out of the process, adding that she felt she had not earned that right. But the Hall of Fame sent out its 1,200 ballots days before Dolly said she wanted to drop out. And last week, Parton changed her previous stance, telling NPR she would accept if chosen. I would yeah. just say thanks and I will accept it. But when I said that, it was always my belief that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was for the people in rock music. And I have found out lately that it's not necessarily that. She told Billboard Wednesday that when people have called her a rock star, I thought they just meant that I was cool. But now I'm going to have to take it literally. This is not the first time Parton has turned down a major honor. Parton revealed a Hoda and Jenna she declined the Presidential <laughs> well, actually, Medal of Freedom actually, not once, actually, but twice. I don't work for those awards. It'd be nice, but I'm not sure that I, you know, uh, that I even deserve it. Now the country music legend is punching her ticket to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, adding to a long list of achievements during her remarkable career. 
Dolly says she doesn't yet know if she's going to the induction ceremony, but obviously she's going to the induction ceremony. And if she does, <laughs> she told Billboard she's going to sing the hardest rock and roll style oh, wow. song oh. she can muster uh, to prove oh, she cool. can do it. And yes, remember she talked about she wanted to produce a rock album? Yeah. Oh, right. She says she still plans to do that. Of course. Cool. Nice. There's no stopping Dolly. Yeah. Oh, no. All right. Joe, thanks for that. We appreciate yeah. it. Next up on Popstar Team USA on Wednesday, President Biden welcomed about 600 athletes to the White House who competed in both the 21 Summer Games and also the Winter oh. Games. Uh, he praised their resilience, thanked them for helping to unite the nation. And you know who else recently chatted with some of our nation's greatest athletes? Our own Craig Melvin. This morning oh. we've got another sneak peek at Inspiring America, the 2022 Inspiration List. And where you interviewed three Olympians. Three. Who yes. overcome quite a bit. Got to talk to Olympic gold medalists Aaron Jackson, Michaela Schifrin, Nathan Chin. We talked about what it takes to get back on your feet after facing crushing defeat. This is what Nathan told me about how he changed his mindset from those 2018 games for this year's games. Is it true that in 2018 you put a great deal of pressure on yourself and then four years later you decided, okay, maybe I can have fun here too? Is that what happened? Definitely. I think when I finished 2018, all I remember were the tough times and how much pressure I felt. A dream come true to be able to com compete at the Olympics and represent the U.S. at the Olympics. But I just felt that there was just so, it was just so overwhelming and so uh, challenging that I just wanted to go home. Hmm. Wow, you can see more of that interview uh, with all three Olympians and hear more from also an incredible list of individuals on our primetime special we're super proud of. It's called Inspiring America, the 2022 Inspiration List. That's going to air this Saturday on NBC, MSNBC, and CNBC. Of course, you all catch it on Sunday on Telemundo, <laughs> and it'll be streaming. You cannot it's escape. everywhere. That's Looking right. Forward to that. yeah. All right, next up, i got a little news to announce. Yeah. If you want to hear it, yeah. Yeah. Yes. on last week, me and my buddy Blake Shelton, believe it or not, Having a have created a, not have, well, kind of, well, yeah. we're giving birth to a new show we sold a show a television show yeah, believe it or not oh, wow. the usa network and we shot it in nashville blake owns this beautiful bar called old red on broadway in yeah. nashville there's our crew there we went down there What's and the we have the show it's it's, it's here's the pitch it's called barmageddon, barmageddon. they say write what you know Perfect. well we pr produce what we know we know bars and having fun so we went down there to a celebrity <laughs> and a viral vip somebody made famous on the internet for a stupid reason uh -huh. and they play five rounds of ridiculous bar games oh my gosh oh, blake, like blake games? and his house band is the, is the there's music <laughs> we have WWE Hall of Famer Nikki Bella yeah. as our host oh, wow. That's and amazing. it's just the world is a complex place and this shows the opposite of that <laughs> it's just down home fun. are they bar Ooh, games like quarters or it's, something? oh yeah it's keg, keg curling, <laughs> keg curling? Uh, we have drunken axe hole we have drunken uh, axe hole. you know just stupid oh, or yes. air cannon cornhole is a, a game that we play <laughs> it's gonna be great yeah so All you can right. go to today.com for more Sounds cool. Woo. the plus and pop star plus a few extra headlines for you we're gonna start with Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'm sure you celebrated Star Wars Day yesterday. May the 4th be with you. Wednesday, fans got to unwrap the gift of a new trailer that looks incredible. For Ewan McGregor's upcoming spinoff, six-part series, going to pick up 10 years after The Revenge of the Sith. It follows Obi-Wan as he faces the consequences of losing Anakin Skywalker to the dark side. Now, the new trailer teasing a sneak peek at Hayden Christensen's long return to the series as Darth Vader. When the time comes, he must be trained. Like you trained his father? You still want Kenobi. He's gone. You can't escape him! I'm already bummed that it's only six episodes. That looks ridiculously good. Limited series. Starts streaming May 25th, of course, on Disney+. Plus. Wow. All right, and finally, our buddy Willie Geist. Remember how Willie ran the New York City Marathon? He did it back in November. Well, he stopped by The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon, and revealed the surprising reason why he had to fake his photo line photos. I'm sitting back in the tent after the race, and this guy comes up and he says, oh, Mr. Geist, I mean, I'm cramped up. I can't do anything. Yeah. Um, do you mind coming back out to the finish line? I said, I do, actually. I can't move. And he said, we, want, we need you to reenact the finish. And I said, why? He said, well, I'm going to be real honest with you. Chelsea Clinton was crossing right about when you were. Former President Clinton, former Secretary of State Clinton were waiting at the finish line. All of our cameras were on that. And no one took your picture. <laughs> I meant photos yeah. at the finish line. Funny story there. By the way, for the record, Willie did run that marathon in under four hours. Very impressive. Very impressive. Good job, Willie. All right. And that is all we have for today. Coming up next, 
not for the show, but just for headlines. We got a lot more, including the cast of Mrs. Doubtfire, the musical. So good. That's coming up. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Our world is facing some complex issues. Chuck Todd breaks them down. Every Thursday, a deep dive into a new subject. Instead of trying to cover a lot of topics in one episode, we're going to focus on one and take a deeper look at how it impacts America. Exploring and explaining the critical stories that affect our future. Meet the Press Reports. Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. Streaming on NBC News Now and on demand next day on Peacock. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. Mrs. Doubtfire is, of course, one of the most beloved films in the long career of the late, great Robin Williams. And nearly now three decades after it first delighted audiences, a new musical adaptation has made its way to Broadway. Lisa Jacob, who played Lydia in the movie, and Annalise Scarpacci, who plays Lydia now in the musical, spoke to us why the movie was so radical at the time. Finding out that Mrs. Doubtfire was being made into a musical, I continue to be shocked at the fact that this story keeps resonating for people. And it's just, it's such an honor to know that these, these ideas about, you know, love is what makes a family, these still are continuing. And people that I know who are, you know, my age, who watched this movie growing up are now showing it to their kids. The water's boiling. Hello! Ah! It's just so wonderful to know that this is a story that continues to be um, important and meaningful for people. Oh my gosh. I mean, my dad and I would watch this movie without fail. Anytime that it was on, and my dad was the first one to show me the movie. And I, well, when I knew that they were auditioning girls who were 18 and older to play Lydia, I was like, oh my gosh, this is my chance. I love this movie so much. I need to play this role. And I was fortunate enough to audition and I got the role the next day. They called the next day and they offered me the role and I was freaking out. And, you know, this whole story revolves around the relationship between Lydia and her father. So to have that moment that my dad and I, it, it's like my dad and I's movie. So it meant a lot. It was absolutely incredible to be back in Mrs. Doubtfire after the hiatus. We've been working on this show. I was 19 when I was cast and now I'm 22. We always say that when, you, when you're in a musical um, that you become a family. But Mrs. Doubtfire is something that I've never experienced before, especially one because we've gone through something unimaginable, which is the pandemic, plus multiple hiatuses. Last night was our third opening night, and um, that's very rare. <laughs> and I feel like third time's a charm. This is, it's really special, and I'm happy to be doing it with everyone in this family. We are just, we're, we just clicked immediately. Seeing Mrs. Doubtfire on Broadway coming to life. It was absolutely surreal. I have been wanting to see it for such a long time. And Annalise and I have become such good friends. We met on Instagram. I am a huge fan of her. And so to be able to finally get to see it, and it was just so much better than I ever could have imagined. So it was a, a truly beautiful evening. Stepping into the role of Lydia is so amazing. It's a lot of pressure. 
this movie means a lot to a lot of people. What we really found was that they really, really loved it. And we had people coming up to us saying that they loved the movie and that they loved um, what it represented, especially for children of divorce. And we had a lot of adults who were children of divorce and they would come see the show and they were just weeping and thanking us for telling the story. Because it's like Rob McClure says all the time, a lot of movies from that time, it was like the parent trap. The parents would get together in the end. This was the first movie of its time that the parents, it was like, it's okay. It's okay if we, it's better for our family if they aren't together and that's okay. And that really was very radical for that time period. Yeah, it was. We, I think now have moved forward a little bit and, and, and understand this a little bit better, but it really was a, a very conscious decision that was a little bit contentious at times about possibly the parents getting back together at the end. That was something that, you know, the producers had, had talked about. And it was so important to us to say, no, this is real life. It does not always have a happy ending. And what a great opportunity to talk about, even if life doesn't work out the way you expected, you can still be okay. I think it's just such a fantastic reimagining of the story. They have made it modern. They have gone in different directions than we did. And I think this idea of recreating family is something that we still need to hear. The idea that a family can be a single mom, a single dad, two dads, two moms, grandmas, aunts, you know, people who aren't even related by blood that we make family out of love. And I think that that is just such an important concept that just needs to be reinforced over and over again. So this is where I just start crying, right? Uh, you know, Robin, Robin was an incredibly kind, emotional, thoughtful, incredible person, and he wanted to bring joy to people's lives. So I think this would have meant a lot to him. The Doubtfire musical crew had a great performance today. We were all like floored by it. If you are visiting the New York area, I just recommend you check out, go to the Stephen Sondheim Theater here and check out Mrs. Doubtfire the musical. Coming up next, our buddy Chris Pratt's gonna take us inside Jurassic World Dominion. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Look who's back together. Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Look who's back together. Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. And we're back now with some dino sightings to share with you. Chris Pratt, of course, is Owen Grady in the latest and unfortunately final installment of the Jurassic Park franchise. Here's what it was like bringing that whole episode to life. It's been four years 
since dinosaurs were unleashed on the world in the last Jurassic World film. Well, now in the latest and final installment, mm. Jurassic World Dominion, humans are doing their best to coexist with those massive creatures. That includes Chris Pratt's character, Owen, who in one thrilling sequ uh, sequence finds himself hunted by some terrifying dinos. Take a look. You were Chris, just saying that was one of the your that's craziest action, action scenes. Tell yeah, us. Yeah, abs absolutely like. one of the craziest action sequences I've ever been a part of or ever seen. You know, you go to like a a, a fireworks display, like yeah. Fourth yeah. of July, New Year's. There's always the finale. Yeah. You're like waiting for if waiting for, and then boom, you're like, oh, this is it. This is <laughs> yeah. the finale. Yeah. I f I feel like the whole movie is that. Uh, it's like 30 years in the making. You know. This is the sixth uh, Jurassic film, and it's the end of this uh, franchise. Is it, it really the end? Yeah, Come I, think, on. I really do think it's the end. Wow. Yeah, you've got the legacy cast back: Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, mm -hmm. plus the cast of Jurassic World. All like converge. Our storylines converging in, in a in a way that is very much a finale. What was it like having the old cast back? Oh, it was insane. Yeah. It was actually insane. Like, first time I saw Jurassic Park. I was 13. Yeah. I had no idea yeah. I was ever going to be an actor. Like, uh, yeah. if you'd have told me that I would be like doing this, I'm on the like. I, there's no way I would have believed it. And I and these these folks were like cemented in my mind as yeah. icons. And so to be working with them, it's 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 a dream come true. When you Plus, say there's yeah. no way to believe it, I mean you were actually living in a van, right? Yeah. You yeah. you were kind of homeless, I guess. As well, you, uh, the home was kind of my van, so <laughs> okay. I did have a life. van. It's a thing. I mean, just to imagine going from that to this. Yeah, it's 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 pretty incredible, and it's been now 23 years, and uh, looking back on it, it's it's. It's kind of mind blowing, yeah. and yeah. How'd you get discovered? You were in Hawaii yeah. waiting tables. Right? I was in yeah. Hawaii waiting tables. I had done theater. Uh, I saw you had the cast of Mrs. Doubtfire yeah. on Broadway. It was like my dream to be on Broadway to do theater. I did it as a kid growing up. I loved it. Always loved to be a performer, and it was never real to me. It was the way a kid would dream of being like, you know, an astronaut. Like, yeah. sure, someone gets to go to space, but it's probably not gonna be me. Yeah. And, you know, I just happened to wait on a director who gave me an opportunity and gave me an audition and, you know, so I got paid 700 bucks and the door got open <laughs> a, a crack, a crack and I was yes. determined to barrel through it. I feel like so much of your life is just snapping into place. Not just yeah. the acting piece, but the family piece, the marriage piece. Yeah. Last time, I think Maria Shriver was here and she spilled the beans. That she all, blurted it she out. She blurted out that y'all are expecting another child. Ah, so, did she? Yeah, That's she, okay. <laughs> your mother-in-law, so you yeah. can't say yeah. anything. Yeah. As long, yeah, <laughs> I know that I can't get in trouble if she's the one who said it. So, so yeah. how does it feel being a girl, uh, a dad of uh, now two? Yeah, it feels, it feels great. I have a nine-year-old son, and now I'm a girl dad. I've got a 20-month-old daughter and another one on the way this summer. Another daughter? Well, we don't know if it's a boy or girl, oh, okay. but, it, uh, you know, uh, we've got a, a new human uh, on the way. Oh. And um, so I'm very excited. We're going to have a lot of diapers. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a really fun summer. Well, you also, going back to Jurassic World, with the original Legacy cast, I heard you guys were sort of in, like, a summer camp together because it was a COVID yeah. shoot. So you guys were yes. all, like, bunking mm -hmm. up in the same hotel? Exactly, yeah. Everyone was bunked up in the same hotel. It was really kind of extraordinary. It reminded me of very early on in my career, you do these independent movies, like the movie that got me into Hollywood, I got paid 700 bucks. We all stayed in the same hotel room, you know? And there's a sort of like summer camp vibe. You build these relationships that you're, you think are gonna last forever and it's like, it feels uh, kind of amazing. And these, oftentimes in these bigger budget movies, you lose a little sense of that yeah. magic because everyone's got their own trailer and they're off doing their own thing. They fly in, you might not see them until they're standing on their mark, but it was not the case with this film. And, and that was one of the uh, amazing silver linings through this process, shooting in COVID with all of the protocols in place. We were actually able to hang out every single night, have every meal together. That's a cool way to end it, yeah. to oh, close cool. the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was really kind of a blessing amongst well, sort of the difficulty that everyone faced over the past couple of well, years. Well, Chris, we want to thank you for being here. We're so happy for all thank the you. success thank you're you having in your life. Jurassic World Dominion uh, from our parent company, NBC Universal. It's theaters on June the 10th. June 10th. Thanks to our buddy Chris for hanging out with us. Always good to see him. Coming up, George Clooney on the ER set in the 90s. What more do I need to say? Stay with us. 
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our world is facing some complex issues. Chuck Todd breaks them down. Every Thursday, a deep dive into a new subject. Instead of trying to cover a lot of topics in one episode, we're going to focus on one and take a deeper look at how it impacts America. Exploring and explaining the critical stories that affect our future. Meet the Press Reports. Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. Streaming on NBC News Now and on demand next day on Peacock. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. you got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Who doesn't love to talk about George Clooney? Well, ahead of his 61st birthday, we thought it'd be fun to pull this 1994 ER set visit that we had with George during his days when he was playing Dr. Doug Ross. We're back with George Clooney, who plays Dr. Doug mm -hmm. Ross, the smooth operator here at ER, mm -hmm. who can't stop hitting on Nurse Hathaway. She won't leave me alone, really. I, Yeah, Let's that's a that. real problem. You're going to give me a quick tour? Give of me the, a quick the, tour, you want to? Yeah, tour? yeah, absolutely. Okay. We'll, we'll start down the hallway over here. Um, so we have, all right, well, you know, this is the main hallway. This is where all of the admittance and everything comes in here. In fact, these are, uh, stand under that. Here, okay. Stand right there. All right. You feel that? Good, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, that's great. Good. Now this is for. <laughs> What's uh, that? I don't know really. This is for soiled linen. We have all of these here. You know, this is for precious space. Yeah. Styrofoam cups. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Here is the doctor's lounge. Oh, now you spend a lot of time here, just sort of letting off steam and relaxing. This is where I shifts. come and I relax. And yeah. We do a little. Um, well, here's a panning thing. Okay. <laughs> no, what is that actually? Do you I, know? We have no idea. We every, there are things in here that I think they're from. You know, the 1940s. Right? Yeah, have you learned a lot about medicine just, just doing the show? I mean, you must have. I think I, I, I noticed a lump here. <laughs> oh, yeah, bad. very, yeah, yeah, very funny. But you did, you said, uh, I read somewhere that you couldn't say aorta right and you had to do oh, a read. Oh, I can't say anything right. <laughs> you had to do a read dub. Yeah, these are neat. Oh, gosh, Let's I don't know. <laughs> Katie, Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, Hello. George. How you doing? Uh, nice to see you. Great to talk to you. Yeah. Bye. Great. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> right. You okay now? Yeah, I feel fine. You now you actually use. I read. I don't mean to be the disgusting anchor here, but you use pig hearts and animal We've intestines for that. the operation. Is that? We have never done that ever. We that's not true. Just some uh, Prozac. We give a little party. <laughs> Thank you. I could use some. Actually, we have. Oh, here we go. Let's go into the um, the the. Uh, this is one of the trauma rooms. This is where all the action takes place. Yeah. This is a. Uh, this is a light uh -huh. over there. Oh, uh, here we go. Look, Sherry left her transportation sitting around. <laughs> yeah, you right. guys are now, here, In fact, stand behind this line here. Okay. You can see this. Okay, and smile. And you're, the DMV will send you your picture in three to six weeks. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> Very we funny. we go in. Where do you get all this equipment? Do you know, George? They Just get it from, from like, failed hospitals. Yeah. Look out, we almost lost this. Oh, God. And this would be, Katie, quick my, check. My, this is what room? This is the oxygen tank? Duh, very Day, good. You know, I think I could be a doctor, don't you think? <laughs> this uh, is a uh, carpet cleaner, actually, which I don't know. I don't know why that's here. Okay. Let's uh, wander out down the hallway. Okay, George, here. you really know this, this equipment really well. The green room. Okay. This is uh, we use this for colonics. I yeah. don't really want to get into that. Are you amazed at how, how realistic it does look? And does, oh, it's it, great. does it help you get into character and all that stuff that I actors really talk about? I don't really worry about getting I think into we're, character. Where are we, George? Way, okay. We're going we're gonna to put you in a gown right now, Katie. Oh, great. Here, let me. Uh, Did you see I performed an emergency appendectomy a little bit earlier? I didn't see that. Yeah. I missed it. But I heard that there were people bleeding. Katie, come here. Okay. We don't want you doing any more surgery. Okay. Do we have to go into the, into the OR? Prepared for the, we're not going into the OR, Katie. Okay. We're going into someplace much 
much more important. We're going to have to do it during the commercial because guess what? We're out of time, George. Of time? Can you believe it? I feel now I feel sad. Oh, is it really exciting? Mm -hmm. Can you take, okay, take me there really quick. They said really, really quickly. quickly. Okay. The important part, you completely <laughs> sterile? You feel clean? Yeah, I feel great. Okay, then let's go over here. Uh, you want the jelly <laughs> or do you want the these cream egg, filled? Honey, these eggs are looking real hurt and <laughs> Thank right. you. All right, listen. I, I think I need a little mouth to mouth, Dr. Ross. <laughs> we'll work on Just that kidding, ever. my husband may be watching. Thank you very much, Dr. Ross, George Clooney, for the little tour. You're very welcome. <laughs> and a happy early birthday to the one and only George Clooney. And there you have it, folks, another Pop Star Plus. It's come and gone, but don't worry, we'll be back tomorrow. Join us if you are so brave. Have a great day. Thanks for being here. All of you watching today all day we're so happy you're tuning into our show it's called today in 30 and it is thursday it is thursday and we've got a good star-studded morning here in studio 1a we'll get to that in a minute but first while the fed is getting tough on record inflation raising key interest rates to try to battle back we're taking a closer look at the phenomenon known as shrinkflation mm -hmm. you need to know about this trend it has some companies giving you less but charging the same price. We've noticed it in the potato noticed chip it. bag. Big time. All right, plus we told you about our visit with stars. One of our guests, the one, the only, Rebel Wilson, she says she's having herself a hot girl summer and she's got a new movie that she says, by the way, is her best work ever. We chatted about all that. Yeah, and you know who else was in our studio mm -hmm. this morning? Fix her upper star, Chip Gaines. This <laughs> time it was for something a little different, so stay tuned to find out. And we are closing the curtain on Broadway Week with a special performance from the cast of Mrs. Doubtfire. This is all coming up in an episode of Today, Today in 30. 30. Here at home, the big news is a new move by the Federal Reserve to curb skyrocketing inflation and bring prices down for consumers and businesses. As expected, the Fed raised a benchmark interest rate by half a point. So how will it impact your bottom line? Why was Wall Street so happy? NBC's business and tech correspondent Jolene Kent has more on that. Hi, Joe. Good morning. Hey, Savannah, good morning. This is the most aggressive step we've seen yet by the Fed to try to fight inflation, bring down those super high prices that we've been seeing everywhere. And it's one of several actions in the government's attempt to get some relief to families and small businesses struggling to make ends meet. This morning, the price of borrowing money is going up again to help bring everyday prices down. We need to do everything we can to restore stable prices. We'll do it as quickly and effectively as we can. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve raised the interest rate by half a percentage point, the biggest hike in 22 years. The increase makes borrowing money more expensive, from new mortgages to auto loans to credit card rates. It's designed to cool down consumer demand and curb inflation now at a 40-year high. President Biden trying to address the problem, too, vowing to cut the federal deficit by another $1.5 trillion this year. We reduced federal borrowing and uh, we help combat inflation. Meanwhile, the new rate hike is a mixed bag for small businesses hoping to expand. Nearly a third say they're dealing with inflation by borrowing money on a regular basis. In Oklahoma City, Jeff Reagan's family business makes energy bars. But with rates going up, he says it's harder to get affordable loans to buy equipment and boost production. It puts just even more pressure 
to not only try and thrive, which is our goal, but really just to survive. In Chicago, restaurant owner Terry Evans welcomes anything that lowers inflation after surging costs forced her to raise menu prices. But now she worries higher rates may cause her customers to cut back even more on dining out. It does present cause and concern for me that our business could potentially start to dip based on the fact that people are going to have to change their buying habits. Now, experts say with the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict and supply chain issues out of China, don't expect your food and energy prices to come down anytime soon. As for recession fears, Fed Chair Powell says there's, quote, nothing to suggest that we are close to that with unemployment so low. He also ruled out raising rates more than half a point at a time uh, in the coming rate hikes, and that sent the stock market soaring yesterday. They like that news a lot. And no doubt the Fed will be watching tomorrow's jobs report for April very closely. Savannah. Mm -hmm. Hey, JoLynn Kent, thank you very much. Appreciate it. As inflation rises, it is no secret that consumers are getting less bang for their buck these days. Mm -hmm. In some cases, a lot less. Uh, you're getting a lot less of what you do pay for. Yeah, NBC senior consumer investigative correspondent Vicki Wynn joins us with what we need to know about shrinkflation. Hey, Vicki. It's a thing. Good morning. It is affecting everything from the grocery aisles to the fast food menu. Companies like to use this tactic because often we consumers, we don't even notice. So this morning, we are expanding your knowledge and showing you what to look for. From housing and gas to clothing and home goods, record high inflation has impacted all of that and a bag of chips. Feeling the economic crunch, one expert says makers of popular snacks like Doritos, sun-made raisins, Chobani yogurt, as seen on this website, now give you less for the same amount of money. None of those brands responded to our request for comment, but market watchers believe it's a sign of growing inflation. Shrinkflation is a real thing. How do you define it? Manufacturers can either raise the price of an item or they can give you less. So when they give you less, that's called downsizing or shrinkflation. It's a sneaky way to pass on a price increase. Ed Dworsky, founder and editor of Consumer World, says shrinkflation has existed since the days of the five cent candy bar. I've never seen it as bad as it is now. We're having product after product that are downsizing. Where are we seeing the most shrinkflation? Well, where are we not seeing it? Paper products traditionally have been one of the big categories where we're seeing downsizing happen. I can't spare a square. This classic Seinfeld scene possibly becoming a reality. Dworsky says Cottonelle Mega Rolls now come with 312 one-ply sheets instead of 340, which amounts to an entire roll now gone from each package. Kimberly Clark, the maker of Cottonelle, did not respond to our request for comment on the alleged change. Also making Dworsky's updated list, miracle Grow, Gatorade, and personal care items like Dove Body Wash. But the companies behind each of these products telling NBC News inflation is not behind any changes to their packaging. Gatorade saying its change to a 28-ounce bottle was part of a years-long ergonomic plan to phase out the 32-ounce container. But at the drive-thru, consumers seeing real change. Burger King announced it would reduce the number of chicken nuggets in a meal from 10 pieces to 8. And with beef prices up 16% from last year, the fast food giant also putting its signature burger out to pasture, removing the Whopper from its value menu. How does this add up for the average consumer when it comes to the household goods they buy? We're seeing some items being, in essence, increased by 10% in cost because you're getting 10% less, sometimes 12% less. Multiply that times the number of items you buy, and that's really going to hit your pocketbook. Dworsky says many are shifting to store brands, which are often the last to downsize, and that has household names like Clorox and Kraft taking notice. Both companies have introduced new products to compete, and Clorox says it will also increase promotions if cheaper brands keep ending up in carts. When it comes to finding the best deal, Dworsky says use unit pricing to compare different brands and sizes, switch brands or buy store brands if they're cheaper, and use coupons to shop, make a meal plan, and stick to your shopping list to stay on budget. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now.
we're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We have new details on that shocking onstage attack of comedian Dave Chappelle. Yeah, he's now released a brief statement about the altercation, while the suspect, who's being held on bail, is facing assault charges. NBC's Gotti Schwartz is on the story for us. Gotti, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, a lot of people are asking how that suspect, 23-year-old Isaiah Lee, was able to smuggle a weapon past security and metal detectors at L.A.'s iconic Hollywood Bowl. Authorities have not yet revealed a motive, but the suspect's brother tells Rolling Stone Lee suffers from mental health issues. Make some noise for hip-hop history. <laughs> Just seconds after being attacked by a member of the audience, Dave Chappelle was back on his feet and back to making jokes. Thank God that was clumsy. In eyewitness video obtained by TMZ, the suspect can be seen surrounded by security. Chappelle's close friend Jamie Foxx also on stage. Whenever you're in trouble, Jamie Foxx will show up in a sheriff's hat. Comedian Tehran was also nearby as the suspect approached. If it wasn't for his clumsiness and Dave Chappelle's prowess, something worse could have happened. The suspect, 23-year-old Isaiah Lee, appeared bloody and bruised before being booked on suspicion of felony assault with a deadly weapon. He's back there getting stomped. <laughs> Police say Lee was carrying this replica gun with a bayonet-style blade. Hollywood unit, suspect 2301 of Hollywood, Highland Avenue with Hollywood Bowl. The suspect's brother telling Rolling Stone Lee suffers from mental health issues and has been in and out of homeless shelters. Despite jokes later cracked on stage by Chris Rock and others, Was that Will Smith? Industry professionals say the attack shows the need for improved security measures to protect performers. It's almost like a Secret Service kind of type of uh, awareness you might need to have because we've seen so many examples of how quickly things can escalate and how quickly somebody can get to the stage. The company that manages the Hollywood Bowl saying in a statement, the safety of our artists, visitors, and staff is our top priority. While Netflix, which sponsored the comedy festival where the attack occurred, saying, we strongly defend the right of stand-up comedians to perform on stage without fear of violence. Confrontations like this 2018 incident at a comedy club in South Carolina have become more common in recent years, according to club owners and comedians like Tehran, who says the shared connections between performers and audiences needs to be preserved. This is a safe space not only for the comedians on stage, but for the audience as well. And it means everything for this to remain a safe space. The water's boiling. Hello! Ah! <laughs> Who could forget that scene from uh, the 1993 Robin Williams classic, Mrs. Doubtfire? Well, nearly three decades later, the films come to life on the Broadway stage. And this morning, we are lucky enough, we got the stars here with us for a special performance. Yeah, so with Make Me a Woman, let's hear it for the cast of Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Guys! I need you to make me a woman. What? Miranda is hiring a nanny, and I put myself up for the job as a woman, and I have an interview tomorrow. Guys, please, I'm begging you. I could do your face with the Maybelline base, rosy cheeks and ruby lips. Yeah. I could do a do that could do good on you, amber streaks and golden tip. Yeah. Lengthen the lashes, tidy the brows, wax the mustache. 
mustache Dressed in a fabulous blouse The canvas is blank But the surface is rough Woo! This is gonna be tough Make me a woman Give it a shot We're gonna give you the best that we got Give us a moment Give us a room Let's work our magic on you With imagination Calibration We can turn you into a great creation I'm ready I'm on in your hand All right. So taste this man And make me a woman if you can Where to start? It's hard to know So many ways that we could go A pill by track A pussy bow And a trapeze coat like Jackie, Jackie O A shoulder gown or a power suit. A valero jacket. Testify, you're talking about my lady. Turn back time, hold on, sugar. With all that hair. Whoa, Nelly. Maybe we could go a little grace, Nelly. Hold the phone. Give me a drum roll, drama. We could do Madonna. Madonna? Madonna Summer. Oh! <laughs> wait, wait, no, wait, 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 stop. no, I'm sorry, stop. I already did a phone interview. She talks like this, dear. She's older, wiser, a bit more substantial. Well, why didn't you say so? Eleanor Roosevelt, a dash of Julia Child, Margaret Thatcher, Janet Reno, and a little bit of Oscar Wilde. Eleanor Roosevelt, a dash of Julia Child, Margaret Thatcher, Janet Reno, and a little bit of Oscar Wilde. Okay, I think I'm getting it. Make them a woman, give it a shot. Go on. I doubt higher, dear. Wow. Oh, 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 what? Okay, that Ooh, was wow. fun. Oh my god! I want to see this tonight. Wow. I know. Hey, right now. Of Great job. That's amazing. Wow. Hi. Hello, dear. Thank you so much. That's the definition of a quick change right there. Hey, wow. Truly. Wow. You can catch the show at the Stephen Sondheim Theater. Wow. Tonight, if you want to. She's spot on. What do you say? Well, uh, come see us at the Stephen Sondheim Theater on Broadway. Dear. Yes. Okay, hey, we will. I'm dying. Guys, one other thing I want to yes. say. It is our head writer, Jared Carullo's birthday today. Jared Carullo. Jared. Happy birthday, Jared. Birthday. Jared. Birthday. Jared. Birthday. Jared. Birthday. Jared. So we, we believe you. them. We're back after this. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical turn point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts 
hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Look who's back together. Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. I mean, that's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We are back with the story of resilience and rebirth deep in the heart of Texas. Back in 2003, the Baylor University men's basketball program was marred by scandal, crime, controversy, and NCAA violations. Dark times. Uh, Coach Scott Drew, he took over that program, and Coach Drew started rebuilding that program. The culmination of his hard work came in 2021 when he led the Baylor Bears to their first ever national championship. Coach Drew details that journey in his new book, The Road to Joy, leading with faith, playing with purpose, leaving a legacy. And the coach joins us now along with Baylor alum, Chip Gaines, who wrote the foreword for the book. Always good to see you too, Chip. Guys, good morning, good morning. to you. Good morning. Hey, hey. It's great seeing you, Dream Team. <laughs> coach, yeah, the book is, this is one of the things I love about the book, it's called The Road to Joy. But joy is actually an acronym for something else. Tell everyone what, what joy stands for and what it means to you. Well, you know, coaches, we're always talking fundamentals, and uh, if you don't have the proper foundation, it's hard to be successful. Uh, you know about that in building houses. you got to have a good foundation. And uh, Jesus, others, yourself, you have those right priorities in life. Uh, uh, you're a servant leader. Great things can happen. My wife actually uh, helped out with that title, so kudos to Kelly Drew on the road to joy. <laughs> so, Coach, you've been, you've been at Baylor for nearly 20 years. When you first you know, were interviewing uh, for what a lot of folks said was one of the worst jobs in coaching, you went full. Yeah. In. I mean, you printed out a newspaper, a fake newspaper with the headline, Baylor wins, uh, makes it to the final, final four. What was it about this job that made you fight so hard for it? Well, first and foremost, uh, prayed about it, felt led to be here. And then uh, if you're ever in an interview process, uh, uh, great advice is uh, win the interview. And that's what uh, we tried to do because um, we felt that uh, great things could happen here at Baylor University. And, uh, you know, uh, the first interview we did after winning the championship uh, was on your show. Uh, pulled the all-nighter first time in probably like 30 years. I was just praying that uh, I'd be awake for that interview. But it was an unbelievable uh, uh, time and a celebration and this book really uh, uh, gives us an opportunity to share how God's blessed uh, uh, not only our program but the the players the coaches and everyone that's played a part in it. Mm. Chip you're just the best cheerleader you keep just sitting there smiling and pumping your fist. What has it meant to you to see this program grow the way it has? I mean, it's changed everything for us as uh, Wake Owens. I mean, simply put, when Coach took this job, I mean, the the city, I mean, you, you probably all can relate to this. It's like when things are going well, it seems like everybody's got a, 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 a kind of a bounce in their step. But yeah. boy, when things mm -hmm. are tough, yeah. I mean, it, it affects everybody. You'd literally go to a coffee shop and grab a cup of coffee, and people would kind of shuffle the coffee to you in sort of a depressed, <laughs> manic state. And then with then literally, I mean, just a few short years later, Coach's energy and his personality and his drive to uh, lead these young student athletes literally to the next level became completely infectious. And we all we all believed in uh, in the story that he was presenting. And, and last year, when uh, when that national championship confetti fell, I mean, I was in the stadium, and I mean, tears were rolling down most of our faces. It was a it was quite a moment for the uh, for the entire community for sure. Hey, by the way, Chip's a heck of a coach. He sits behind the bench at the games. When he says play defense, they do. So I'm not as listen to him. I like to think I have control over my sports teams, too. But, Chip, you probably do. Uh, coach, I have to ask, because you talk a lot about faith and leading your team with faith. Now, we're yeah. not necessarily part of a basketball team, but we've got our little team here at the Today Show. So what advice mm -hmm. do you have for instilling, you know, joy within the team? 
Well, again, it comes down to the right priorities. And if you're doing things for others and you're a servant leader, I mean, Jesus came to serve, not be served. Uh, people will follow that. They'll, they'll join in and want to be a part of something greater than themselves. And uh, again, that's what the, uh, the book kind of does is it's a playbook for how we were able to be successful. Doesn't matter if you're in a business, uh, what organization, we're all a part of something uh, uh, in some team. And uh, we all want to work and be a part of teams that we want to be yeah. a part of. This kind of uh, plays that out. And again, uh, Waco is a happening place. Chip, Magnolia, <laughs> Joe. By the way, when Chip and Joe travel with us, we're undefeated. Yeah. When oh, Chip comes, oh. we're just about 75%. <laughs> so we got to have Joe with them. She's wow. the case. Uh, Coach Drew, Chip, thank you so much. I wish we had more time. Yeah. And Chip, when you come back uh, next time, we're going to talk about this marathon that you recently ran. When, next time you yeah, come back, absolutely. we're going to talk about that. The Road to Joy. That book is out right now. Pick it up. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? are ready for something like this. Yeah, it's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Look who's back together. Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Look who's back together. Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. NBC News, streaming free now. Rebel Wilson never fails to make us laugh, so we cannot wait for her newest comedy on Netflix. It is called Senior Year. Rebel plays a former high school it girl who wakes up after being in a coma for 20 <laughs> years. She's got to go back to school to win prom queen. Take a look. There's only two performances left in the school year, though, so <gasps> I don't really think it's worth it. Moth, I only need one performance to make a splash if I have any chance of becoming prom queen. Steph, this head still needs a crown. Ew, I'm so sorry. It's not going to get it. Steph, we do not have prom queen at this school anymore. Oh, my God, are you having a mini stroke? <laughs> By the way, that face was priceless in that moment. You're like, well, what, the world's changed? Okay, fun fact, in that scene, the yeah. day before, I'd done my back out trying to do a cheerleading oh. stunt. So in that scene, why I'm perching like that is because I couldn't walk that day. <laughs> So I was in so much pain, like and I was just like, okay, I'll just do this scene. But, yeah, I'm a bit awkward in that scene. By the way, cheerleading's a real physical sport. You, so you threw your back out? Yeah. I, not even, like, doing a backflip, like, just attempting to do the pose coming out of a backflip. Yeah. And then I, my back went on both sides at the oh. same time. So, I, I, yeah, I couldn't Ooh. walk for two days, but still had to, had to mm. film. <laughs> How important was this film for you? Because, yes, it's senior mm. year, it's this fun movie, but this movie has some really important messages mm -hmm. about what what happiness is, what success is, not just for teenagers. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, it's a big, glossy comedy with cool cheerleading and dancing, but at the core of it, like, the message is, firstly, that high school doesn't define you, mm -hmm. which is a really important message for young people especially, and then also just to be, like, your true, authentic self um, and, you know, don't fall for peer pressure and try to be something you're not, uh, which my character does in the film, um, but, but just, you know what, just be your true self and, you know, embrace your uniqueness. And one of my favourite quotes uh, was, why fit in when you can stand out? Mm, I like that. You know, I feel like I know very few high school kids who were their unique selves. I think you're scared and you want yeah, to be in a group. a lot of people are terrified to, just to be their true self. But then, then I feel like you kind of find yourself, you're, in this, you're also in a dramatic role coming up, mm -hmm. and you were talking about how this is the perfect time and the perfect time for your first dramatic role. Why, why is that? 
Um, well, I guess I started as a dramatic actress, like I wanted to be the next Dame Judi Dench. Mm -hmm. um, and then because I was bigger, everyone said, oh, just go more into comedy because uh, bigger girls kind of tended to do better in comedy. So, so I went into comedy and then now, like, 20 years later, kind of circling back and going, oh, you know, I can give the dramatic stuff a, well, a go now. Now that you are in your 40s, do you feel like you're a more complete actress, mm -hmm. a more complete person? Before that, we often think, you know, if only I had this, I'd be happy, or mm -hmm. that. And then you're in yeah. your 40s and you're like, this, this is who I am. You're, you're just yeah. like, OK, I felt literally when I turned 40, I was like, I just felt more um, confident and powerful as a mm. woman. Um, and that combined with my health transformation that year, I was just like, you know what, I just, I don't know, it's weird. You just feel more, okay, this is me and I, you know, I know what's good for me and what's not. And now I can just, just be, you know, live in my own power, which is great, especially I, as a woman. I think that's interesting that they guided you in the past toward funny roles when clearly drama was in your soul. Well, that was the way they were pointing you. But inside, what did you, what did you feel? I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I think a lot of people see my characters and they think, oh, Rebel's like wild and she's like, ah. Um, yeah. But like inside, I'm quite serious and you reserved. Yeah. And, um, and so, uh, and a lot of people think, oh, that character is me. But then when they re meet the real me, they're like, oh, she is actually sensible and she's a lawyer and she's like, you know, different, different things apart from just my characters. I know you just opened a theatre in Sydney, Australia mm -hmm. called The Rebel. Mm -hmm. Yes, What is I'm all of this like? Of I mean, when you yeah. talk about health transformation, you yeah. have had a life transformation. Yeah, yeah and that's uh, me giving back to, like, young people in Australia. And so they now have a space to um, create their own projects. And because that's how I started, I wrote my own plays and put them on. And, and so now, like, a whole bunch of new young talent can do that. Because with kids, like, uh, to find their self-esteem and self-confidence, like, the creative arts are so important in that. So that's why the Rebel Theatre's in Sydney and it'll be home to, like, you know, lots of great shows featuring all these great young performers. Oh, cool. You could be doing anything and you're doing that. Hey, that was fun. That was. was good. I love Our show rocks. You know what else was good? What? The big news we shared about our summer concert series. Oh, we're kicking it off two weeks from today with one of the biggest names in music, Harry, Harry Styles. Styles. All right, for all the info on how to get your fan passes, head to today.com slash Harry Styles. We hope to see you there. Have a great Thursday. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Now everybody loves a hearty meal. But when the cooking is done, nobody loves doing dishes. So today, we're making three delicious recipes that all come together in just one pot. I'm making a one pan chicken pot pie with some of my favorite spring veggies. I'm whipping up Tuscan style tortellini soup. And I'm making my flavor-packed Thai-inspired green curry noodles. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Growing up, it was always a treat for me and my siblings to make frozen chicken pot pies when my parents were out to dinner and we had to fend for ourselves. And today I will be making a more grown up version of this classic comfort food. This recipe has some of my favorite veggies and I know your whole family will absolutely love it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our onion going. Look at that stunning dice. Move those onions off to the side to prep the rest of our veg. This is fennel, gorgeous, gorgeous fennel. Bulb, fronds, and the stems, okay? So I really love using fennel in honestly any kind of cooking. I promise you all of that anise flavor is going to mellow out beautifully once it hits the pan. We have these fronds here. We're gonna just give them a nice rough chop. So we've taken the stem off, and then I'm going to cut it in half, like so. We'll go from the top to the back, like so. And then rock it through from the back to the front. 
let's quickly do our celery. And the theme here is green. I don't know if you can tell. All green veggies, that's what we're working with today. Okay, finally our garlic clove. And you also don't have to worry about chopping this too fine. So let's get to sauteing. We are going to add in a nice hunk of unsalted butter. We are also going to add in some olive oil. Once it is all melted and as it starts bubbling like so, that is when we know to add in our veggies. These will all go in at the same time. These veggies are really running away from me here. <laughs> okay. We want these veggies to break down, to caramelize a bit, to develop their flavor. And while that is going, we are going to get to work on the rest of our veggies because believe it or not, we are adding even more vegetables to this already full vegetation experience. All right. So next up, we have our kale. This is lacinato kale, also known as dinosaur kale. It is flat. It's not as crazy and curly like curly kale. And my favorite way to prepare it is I will take the bottom right where the stem is, grab either side, and then take my finger and pull that stem right through. And there you go. Okay, so while this is going, we are actually going to add even more flavor with some fresh thyme. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to bunch it on up in pieces, slice it thin, just like so. How about that? Fabulous. We're gonna get to work on our chicken, a great shortcut that I love to do is I love to use a rotisserie chicken. I am pulling off this skin just because we don't necessarily need it and we can chop this up. My siblings prefer white meat and I prefer dark meat with chicken, so it's good. We'll have a little for me and then the rest for my sibbies. <laughs> okay, looking good. So, now that our veggies are ready to rock, it is time to create what I like to call an almost roux. <laughs> so we are just going to add in this all-purpose flour, but it's really important when you add in flour to a pot pie, to anything as a thickening agent, that you take the time to cook the flour down. So we wanna just keep cooking this down for about two to three minutes. Okay, it's time to thicken this up. We're gonna start by doing one cup of the stock. We wanna make sure that all of this flour breaks down. And now what we wanna do is we wanna bring this to a simmer to continue thickening it a bit more. Next up, we are going to add in our kale to wilt it and to also thicken up our mixture a bit. And now that this looks nice and thick, we're going to add in our final ingredients, our peas, our fennel fronds, and our chopped up chicken. This is my favorite thing to do with a homemade pot pie. I love using puff pastry, store-bought. I'm taking a little bit of all-purpose flour and just giving it a nice light dusting. Open it on up. This is one sheet of puff pastry. We're gonna give this one more light dusting of flour. Take your rolling pin. The main thing here is to make sure that you roll it out so that it fits whatever pan you are working with. And we're just going to fold it, bring our pan over, lift it up, and then open it up like a book. And dress it right over the top. 
you cute, you gorgeous. I love ya. We want to make sure that we have about one inch around our cast iron. And you can just trim the corners off of that pastry. I have egg wash right here. And the reason why we're popping this onto the top and brushing it over the top of our pastry is because if we don't, what's gonna happen is our pastry is gonna end up looking a little sad. So we're just taking a pastry brush and really delicately brushing that egg wash over the top and the sides of the pastry. Okay, we wanna make sure it has some ventilation. You wanna make sure that you have at least three, maybe four, right in the center of that pie so that steam can escape. And then my favorite little extra layer of pizzazz is to take some flaky salt and sprinkle it over the top of this pot pie. So this is going to go into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes and just check about halfway through. Oh man, our pot pie has cooled. We want it to cool for about 10 minutes after it comes out of the oven. And now there's only one thing left to do, slice it up and give it a taste. And then we're gonna give this a nice big scoop Oh yeah, look at that. Mmm, it is unbelievable how food can instantly transport you back to a moment. It is just bursting with spring beauty and energy. I love it. One more bite, because we deserve it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Our world is facing some complex issues. Chuck Todd breaks them down. Every Thursday, a deep dive into a new subject. Instead of trying to cover a lot of topics in one episode, we're going to focus on one and take a deeper look at how it impacts America. Exploring and explaining the critical stories that affect our future. Meet the Press Reports. Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. Streaming on NBC News Now and on demand next day on Peacock. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I absolutely love Italian food, just like everybody else. It's so comforting and it always tends to hit the spot. Now with minimal prep, my tortellini soup is just a thing to make at the end of a long day because it's just in one pot. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the big pot that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna set it onto a medium high heat. Next, we're gonna move on to the sausage. This is spicy Italian sausage. I think it adds a lot of flavor. Just remove the casing and the sausage. Well, sticky little thing, isn't it? <laughs> then we're just gonna put this right into the pan right now. Squeeze that sausage right on out, right into that pot. Right now, I'm breaking up the meat, so that way it'll be dispersed. It'll cook a little bit faster. Let's move on to chop up our veggies. So I've got some onion here. We're just gonna dice this up, slice it in half. And you can do generous chunks. There we go. Moving on, we got some fresh tomatoes here. Gonna dice these up as well. All 
Right, and you know what? I'm thinking our sausage is about finished. Yeah, it's great. It's got a great color on there. We're gonna take a slotted spoon and we're gonna remove the sausage because we don't wanna take out the oil. We want the oil from that sausage to help out with the flavor. There we go. Now, since there's not a lot of oil left after the sausage, I am gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add in my onions and we're gonna saute those. You know I am a garlic lover and if you love Italian food, you gotta be a garlic lover too. Now, got some carrots here. Because they're so small, I'm not gonna peel them. I'm just gonna begin to dice them up as well. But just make sure you wash your carrots. Give that a nice stir. All right. In goes the garlic. Slide that on in. Give it another stir. And we're gonna cook this for about one minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna deglaze the bottom of this pot. We're gonna do that with some red wine because we're fancy here in the Today All Day Kitchen. So grab your favorite red wine. I'm gonna be using a blend and we're gonna add about a half a cup. There we go. And if you wanna toast yourself during this recipe, I won't judge you, that's your business. Mm -hmm. Let this simmer down. And in go the tomatoes. I'm gonna let the tomatoes rest in here with the onions and the red wine and garlic. Let that simmer for a minute. I'm gonna finish preparing the rest of our veggies. Basil. I'm gonna roll them up, stack the leaves. And I'm just gonna just like this. Beautiful. That should be enough. I'm gonna reserve some too for garnish at the very end. Check back in on our tomatoes and onions and look at this. You can see how thick it is. It's kind of slushy. That's exactly the texture that we want. I think this looks good. What about y'all? Yeah, it can, it looks real good. Okay, let's start to bring everything else together. I'm gonna add in some oregano. Adding back in the sausage as well. Give this a good stir. And then our stock, pour it in. This is some chicken stock. Another pinch of salt, some black pepper. And lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle in some basil. Boom. Did we want some heat? Yeah, Kev, we want the heat, bring the heat. All right, some red pepper, boom. I'm gonna crank up the heat so that it comes to a boil and then as soon as it starts to boil, you're gonna wanna reduce the heat down to a simmer. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking good. Yeah. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Our world is facing some complex issues. Chuck Todd breaks them down. Every Thursday, a deep dive into a new subject. Instead of trying to cover a lot of topics in one episode, we're going to focus on one and take a deeper look at how it impacts America. Exploring and explaining the critical stories that affect our future. Meet the Press Reports. Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. Streaming on NBC News Now and on demand next day on Peacock. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Our world is facing some complex issues. Chuck Todd breaks them down. 
Every Thursday, a deep dive into a new subject. Instead of trying to cover a lot of topics in one episode, we're going to focus on one and take a deeper look at how it impacts America. Exploring and explaining the critical stories that affect our future. Meet the Press Reports. Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. Streaming on NBC News Now and on demand next day on Peacock. We're going to take some kale. All I'm doing is folding the you know, kale over and I'm going to take out the big stem. Take it at the very top and just drag the knife along the stem. Comes right out. And then just do a chop. Yeah, just like this. This is great, still simmering. Ready, in, go. The kale, beautiful. And this is some cheese fuel tortellini. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes. You can cover and let this simmer. All right, I think this is done. I'm gonna turn off the heat of our pot and we're gonna plate this amazing one pot Tuscan tortellini soup. And this soup deserves the good bowls, okay? I'm just gonna say that. It deserves it. Get a big scoop. Oh yeah. We've got the color from the carrots, color from the kale, and color from the tomatoes. Mm, beautiful. Let's garnish. Pepper. A little bit of dried oregano. If you want some, beautiful. Basil, there we go. And look at this, holy smokes. Cannot wait to devour this soup. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh my Lord, that is a delicious soup. Now, I'm not team soup only in the wintertime. I'm team soup all year long. You wanna come home to a nice warm hug. This is it. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. I know making a curry from scratch might sound intimidating, but I promise it's actually pretty easy. After trying this recipe, you may never go back to that jarred stuff. I'm gonna kick things off with my curry paste. Traditionally, this is made in a mortar and pestle, but this girl is busy, so we're gonna put everything in a food processor and it comes out just great. So we're gonna first start with some coriander stems. So get those right into the food processor. Then we're gonna use one small shallot or a half of this large one here. And I like to quarter it so it's easier to blend up in the food processor. So get that right in. And then we're gonna use four cloves of garlic. One Thai green chili. You could just take the stem right off like this. And you could cut this in half if you'd like so it's easier to blend. And then we're gonna use one inch piece of fresh ginger. Fresh is key. The traditional ingredient in this is usually galango, but it's not readily available, so ginger is the next best substitute. And the best way to peel ginger is using a spoon. 
because if you run your spoon right against the meat of the ginger, the peel comes right off. How cool is that? So pop that right in. Next, we want half a stalk of fresh lemongrass. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop and we're gonna get that beautiful lemongrass right in. I'm using one fresh lime. Let's get that all in. So then we wanna just cut this in half. You can use your hand or a little citrus squeezer and give it a good squeeze. And we have a few more remaining ingredients. We want some toasted cumin seeds and some toasted coriander seeds. Then we wanna add a pinch of white pepper. This is deceiving, white pepper is quite spicy, so a pinch is more than enough. And then a pinch of kosher salt. And we're gonna whiz this up. And just keep pulsing. Okay, so I think we're good. So I'm gonna get it out into a bowl and then I'm gonna grab my veggies, tofu, and noodles for the rest of my recipe. So we've had our tofu here sitting in some paper towel. We've pressed it so you'll notice that it's a little bit drier from when you open the package. So I like small cubes because I want them to be bite-sized and able to fit on my spoon or fork. Plus, if you make them smaller, then they'll cook better and crisp up. Okay, the next step is tossing them in some cornstarch. So you just wanna lightly coat them. Great, so let's turn our skillet on. And we're gonna wanna get this to about a medium high heat. Coat the bottom with some neutral cooking oil. I'm gonna start giving them a flip. This is what you want. This is gonna be flavor packed. These are looking great. You could see the color, the crisp. So I'm gonna get them removed and then start prepping my veg. First, I'm gonna slice my onion. We're just using a medium to large yellow onion. So I'm gonna do a quick slice on each half. So our onion is done. And next we wanna do one long red chili. These actually aren't that spicy, but they're gonna add a lot of flavor and they're gonna look beautiful against the green curry. So we're just gonna give a quick slice on this, just basically thin circles. Great. And next we wanna slice a green bell pepper. This one's a big one. So cut this in half. And I just like to scoop out the center to clean it up. And then similarly, we're just going to run our knife through it like the way we did for the onion. Great. And lastly, we have some carrot. We're gonna try doing this julienne because I like it to match the onions and the peppers, okay? And now the one pan or pot magic begins. So we're gonna take the same pan that we use to crisp up our tofu in. While that's heating up, we're gonna coat it with a little bit more of that neutral oil. And now I'm gonna add in all of my veggies. Ooh, I always love that sizzle. Okay. So we wanna saute it for about five minutes or so. And to help with the process, we're gonna add in a bit of salt. The salt is gonna help release all of the moisture in the vegetables. Now that our onions are looking a little bit translucent, it's time for our curry paste. It smells so good. We're gonna let this cook down for about three to four minutes. 
once you notice that the vegetables have softened and it's browning on the bottom, it's time for our liquids. So we're gonna add in about two cups of water. and some full fat coconut milk. And now is when we add our green peas. Stir this all together, and then we wanna bring this to a slow simmer. So while we wait for our curry to come to a slow simmer, I wanna talk about the noodles. So I'm actually using edamame noodles, which are noodles made out of edamame beans. They're super delicious and they're a beautiful green color. Okay, so our curry is simmering. So now it's time to add our noodles. You just wanna make sure all the noodles have some moisture on them. They're all covered with the liquid. Great. Then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna clean up some of these bowls and get ready to taste. Okay, so our noodles have been simmering for about five minutes, so let's give it a check. These will look so good. Notice that all the liquid has reduced, but it's still nice and saucy, and the veggies are still vibrant in color. All right, let's get it plated. So beautiful. I love the way the carrots look in this because they really add that pop of color. Okay, now for our tofu. We haven't forgotten about that. So they've actually cooled off here, which is great because now they're nice and crispy. And then we're gonna add some of our garnishes. So we have some fresh lime, some fresh coriander, and we reserved some of our fresh red chili. Look at this, can you believe that this was made in only one pan? I just have to give this a taste. Are you kidding me? It's like I'm walking the streets of Bangkok. It's so vibrant, it's so fragrant. You should always eat with your eyes first. And this is certainly a dish that I'm eating with my eyes first. Security being stepped up at the Supreme Court as protests grow over that leaked draft opinion suggesting Roe versus Wade could soon be overturned. We are live in Washington with where the battle dividing the nation goes from here. Unfathomable. The U.S. reaches one million COVID deaths. A 